First Iron Automotive heard you were thinking of starting your holiday shopping earlier this year, so the season of giving starts now. $15 off oil changes, $100 off four tires, and save on just about any service. Head to the website firstironauto.com and claim your savings. First Iron Automotive, a proud sponsor of Fort Bend Vibe Sports. Make your appointment today at any of the four convenient locations in Sugarland and Cinco Ranch. All four stores open on Saturday. Firstironauto.com. Hello fans, this is Bradley Stavanaugh with Needville Insurance. We know Fort Bend County. I'm a fourth generation resident of Fort Bend. I'm your local hometown trusted agent. With over 30 carriers and nine auto insurance carriers, we shop the insurance for you. We know insurance is hard. We know it's complicated. We make it easy for you. We have Spanish speakers here available for you. Call us at 979-793-7411 or needvilleinsurance.com. Once again, call us 979-793-7411. You are the master of the multitask, the champion of making it happen. Taking care of business is not for the faint of heart. Still, you take care of it. Taking care of business. But who takes care of you? Office Depot Office Max. We supply you, copy you, and tune you up. Members get 2% back in rewards on everything, and we mean everything. We take care of you, so you can take care of business. Office Depot Office Max. Taking care of business. Right guard, Cadet Private First Class Esmeralda Esparza. Public Affairs Officer, Cadet Second Lieutenant Eric Trejo. Battalion Commander is Cadet Lieutenant Colonel Joseph Hamde Tellis. And the Senior Army Instructor is Captain Kerwin Trigger. Ladies and gentlemen, it's time now for the playing of our national anthem, sung by the Hightower High School Marching Band. You are now tuned in to Vibe Fort Bend Sports, live coverage of Fort Bend High School varsity games. Vibe Fort Bend is your home for boys and girls Fort Bend ISD athletics. It's always free to listen live or listen later on the podcast at vibe.com slash Fort Bend. Now, let's go out to the broadcast booth and the Vibe Fort Bend announcing team for all the action. You're listening to Vibe Fort Bend. Welcome to Hall Stadium. This is Patrick Kinnick along with Kyle Harris. We are at the 40-yard line up here in the in the box, about ready to get the coin toss be, uh, underway here to see who's going to get that first possession tonight. Kyle, do you feel a bit of electricity in the air tonight for this playoff game? 
I definitely feel uh, a lot of electricity in the air, especially for these high tower kids, these high tower students, all the staff that's over here. You know, we are at Hall Stadium, a quote unquote neutral site. Yeah. But I find it very interesting, Patrick, that the <laughs> high school that's playing here is 500 feet away from us. Yes. So it's pretty interesting. But I think there's a lot of electricity in the air because, like I said, this is kind of high towers home field. So yeah, it, it's definitely high towers home field. And uh, let's see, we got in the background our our referee is. Uh, explaining the the coin to the uh, respective captains out there our pa man is announcing the uh the captains and here's our referee a little shake of hands here don't normally get the, the announcing of the uh referee before the game on this coin toss but I think tonight being a playoff yeah. game I think it's kind of nice to hear it and who won the toss <laughs> He flipped the coin and then he talked to both teams now and we're going to see who won the toss. Talk to Hightower first. Let's see here. Hightower wins the toss and they will defer. Meaning looks like Manville is going to receive the opening kickoff tonight on a beautiful football night here from Hall Stadium. We're talking about 50 degree, 50 degree temperatures. This is football weather for sure. I saw a lot of hats and gloves and some blankets and so on in the, in the, in the stands. Fortunately for everyone, I think we have very little wind. The wind is what really gets you on these cold nights. And so the flags are hanging on the the poles out there to the left. Yeah, I was going to say, Patrick, scoreboard. speaking of that wind, you know, I was turning into the North Shore Katie Tompkins playoff game earlier, and, and let me tell you, over at Galena Park ISD Stadium, the wind uh, was having a huge factor on that ball. <coughs> Punts, kickoffs, the ball was sometimes traveling backwards. So you're, you're right about that wind. It definitely can have an impact, but it doesn't seem like it's going to have a big impact on this game here tonight. Well, uh, that was a, quite a game. Did you see the whole game? I listened. 26 to 20? I did. It's just 26 North Shore, 20 to Katie Tompkins. Tompkins wow. had a, they almost came back there third and fourth quarter and, and North Shore held strong and uh, ended up coming up with the victory. Wow, that must have been a really good game. Yeah. Over there you said it's Galena Park, you It said? was at Galena Park, yes sir. Yes sir. So then tonight uh, we also have a big game going on at the University of Houston with mm -hmm. Rich Point uh, playing Atascacita. Man, what Roger a game that's going to be. over there doing that <laughs> game. It's gonna it looks like uh, Guzman is going to be kicking off for Hightower. And I should have got the numbers for the Manville receivers, and I did not get them, so I'm going to kind of go on the fly on this. Looks like number 11, perhaps, over there. Uh, Neil. I might be reading it wrong. Could be number 10. I will say it is real hard for us up here to see some of these numbers. It's going to be a... Uh, Here's the kick. The game tight. is underway. It's going to be received and then let go and into the end zone. So they decide to let it go. No return. And it looked like number 15 was the man down there, uh, Jalen O'Neal. He let that ball go, landed around the five, and then it rolled into the end zone for him. Manville all white tonight. White helmets, white jerseys, white pants with the red numerals. As Kyle said, we're going to do the best we can to read the numbers or if they're if they're looking straight at us we can we can see them and uh, if their back is turned to us we can see those numbers sometimes it's hard to see when it's side to side it feels but like we're a little higher up than we were last week Patrick that's for sure <laughs> we're, <laughs> we're up here we've got four receivers to the right from Anvil on their first possession first play of the game quick pass to the right and it's caught at the 22 wrapped up but then he gets away and he's still going he's gonna get a first down all the way to the 37 yard line and I want to get that number for you. What a... That was number 24. Demarcus Owens was caught at a... Th he caught the pass at a 22-yard line, was wrapped up, broke the tackle, broke another tackle, and then he scampered for... Well, they gave him 10 yards, 12 yards on the play, so a first down for the Mavericks on the first play of the game. Quarterback is Caden Smith, so he's one for one. 
in his passing attempts here tonight. And there's a little movement on the line. No whistle. Long pass down the left side. It's going to be incomplete. There, were there markers on the play or not? Let's see. I, I, I see one at the 35. I saw one of the Mangle tackles move. I also saw Hightower jump too. So I don't know what you saw, Kyle, but let's see what the referee saw. So apparently the one of the uh, Hightower men jumped, causing the movement on the left side of the Maverick line. And it's going to be five free yards for the Mavericks. Now this is the second time these two teams have played this year. They played earlier, and Hightower won that game 16-12. to That was way back September 23rd at Freedom Field in Alvin. And so the Mavericks thinking a little bit about revenge. Here's the handoff up the middle. He's going to be flipped up at about the 35. Gain of three. Number seven, DeMonte Seymour making that carry. And that's going to be second down and looks like three yards to go for the Mavericks. Both teams coming to the game at 10-2, and two and a, they tied in their district. I'll talk about that in just a moment. Second down and three for the Mavericks. And Caden Smith waiting for the snap. He's got a back behind him and two flank, one to the right, one to the left. Up the middle he goes. It's going to be a first down. It's going to be Sm Seymour again. And he's going to get to the 50-yard line, and the Mavericks are in business here. They got two first downs here in the first series of the night. Nice little six yard run there for Seymour. Yeah. Go to midfield and he's been able to get through some of those uh, defensive linemen. Here's that same play they ran the very first play. And it's going to be complete. I think it's the same receiver, Owens. Sure was. LaMarcus Owens, this time he did not pick up 12 yards. He got about four. Now there's a man down. It looks like one of the high tower players is down. Let me uh, get this message here. Don't miss the UIL Football State Championship starting Wednesday, December 15th at AT&T Stadium in Arlington. Ticket information and more can be found at UILTexas.org. The same field that the Cowboys played in yesterday and the Raiders won on the last second field goal. In overtime. Absolutely, Patrick. <laughs> I was yeah. excited about no, that. It was, it was a great Thanksgiving <laughs> game and definitely enjoyed getting on my mom, who's a, who's a diehard Cowboys oh fan. Oh, boy. About there's, that one. Yeah, there's a little uh, so incentive there. It looks like we're going to have a pretty big injury here, let's Patrick. Take a short so let's break. take a yes. short break. We'll be right back here at Hall Stadium. Don't go anywhere. Vipe, Fort Bend. You are the master of the multitask, the champion of making it happen. Taking care of business is not for the faint of heart. Still, you take care of it. Taking care of business. But who takes care of you? Office Depot Office Max. We supply you, copy you, and tune you up. Members get 2% back in rewards on everything, and we mean everything. We take care of you, so you can take care of business. Office Depot Office Max. Taking care of business. Hey high schoolers, are you interested in a career in sports media? Vipe can help! Launched in 2017, our Vipe U Ambassador Program is a one-of-a-kind educational scholarship program that offers high school students a chance to gain hands-on experience in the sports media field. Vipe U also gives students a platform to build their portfolio of creative work under the guidance of Vipe's seasoned professionals. From covering games to publishing photos, writing articles, and conducting on-camera interviews, each Vipe U ambassador receives an immersive experience geared toward their interests while promoting their own school and preparing them for their future. Email info at vipemedia.com to find out more about Vipe U today. You work hard, so you deserve the good things in life, like getting an amazing deal on awesome internet. That's why there's never been a better time to switch to Xfinity. Get the fast and reliable internet you deserve for $19.99 a month for 12 months with a one-year contract. And ask how to score 12 times the speed for the same internet price when you add Xfinity Mobile. Just imagine, faster downloads, more streaming, the possibilities are endless. Plus, you'll save hundreds over AT&T. Or learn how to get a $200 prepaid card when you get gig speed internet during the Xfinity Black Friday sales event. That means powering a house full of devices when everyone's home this holiday season. So what are you waiting for? Sign up now because you deserve awesome internet. 
Go to Xfinity.com, call 1-800-XFINITY, or visit a store today. Requires paperless billing and auto pay and 12621. Restrictions apply. New Connect Internet 50 megabits per second customers only. Equipment, taxes, and fees extra and subject to change. After term, regular rates apply. Compares monthly service charge for Xfinity 600 megabits per second to AT&T 500 megabits per second, each with one unlimited mobile line for a year as of 10621. Reduce speeds up to 20 gigabytes of mobile usage. Back here at Hall Stadium. Uh, fans, we just want to let you know that this Vipe live presentation of Fort Bend High Tower Playoff Football is brought to you by Xfinity, the future of awesome, and also by First Tire and Automotive, with four great locations in Fort Bend County for the best prices on tires and everything else your vehicle needs to run at its very best. Visit FirstTireAndAuto.com. That's FirstTireAndAuto.com. Also, we're being brought to you by Archer Volkswagen on the Southwest Freeway, just inside the Sam Houston Tollway. They've been open since 1956, and they're ready to serve you. You'll feel like family when you're at Archer, Archer Volkswagen. Also by the Needville Insurance Agency, you'll get the very best rate on your car and home insurance when you put the Needville Insurance Agency to work for you. Bradley Stavanaugh and his team shop dozens of carriers so you pay the lowest premium possible. Call them at 979-793-7411 or go to needvilleinsurance.com. Well, our ball player, unfortunately, is still on the field um, surrounded by trainers and so on, and uh, you hate to see a player down early in the game, obviously, and then any, at any time. So we're just waiting a little bit. I think we're going to take... Perhaps a short break. Yeah, yeah. As it's we kind wait, of a, yeah. we got the. Uh, looks like they're bringing out the. Mm -hmm. uh, what do you? What do you call the that? Cart. Little cart. Yeah. yeah. Somber so. moment out here at Hall Stadium. Yeah, this player has been down for at least about five minutes now, and they're having yep. to bring the cart out here. So we'll give you all the details right after this break. Stay. Keep. Keep with us. Archer Volkswagen showroom is open, and our team's excited to help you. Visit our sales department Monday through Saturday from 9 a.m. to 9 p.m. Or bring your car in for service from 7 a.m. to 7 p.m., Monday through Friday, and Saturdays from 9 a.m. to 2 p.m. We're closed on Sundays to rest and recharge with our families, so we can serve you well through the week. We hope to see you soon. First Star and Automotive heard you were thinking of starting your holiday shopping earlier this year, so the season of giving starts now. $15 off oil changes, $100 off four tires, and save on just about any service. Head to the website firsttireandauto.com and claim your savings. First Star and Automotive, a proud sponsor of Fort Bend Vibe Sports. Make your appointment today at any of the four convenient locations in Sugarland and Cinco Ranch. All four stores open on Saturday. Firsttireandauto.com. You work hard. So you deserve the good things in life, like getting an amazing deal on awesome internet. That's why there's never been a better time to switch to Xfinity. Get the fast and reliable internet you deserve for $19.99 a month for 12 months with a one-year contract. And ask how to score 12 times the speed for the same internet price when you add Xfinity Mobile. Just imagine, faster downloads, more streaming, the possibilities are endless. Or learn how to get a $200 prepaid card when you get gig speed internet during the Xfinity Black Friday sales event. That means powering a house full of devices when everyone's home this holiday season. So what are you waiting for? Sign up now because you deserve awesome internet. Go to Xfinity.com, call 1-800-XFINITY, or visit a store today. Requires paperless billing and auto pay and 12621. Restrictions apply. New Connect Internet 50 megabits per second customers only. Equipment, taxes, and fees extra and subject to change. After term, regular rates apply. Reduce speeds after 20 gigabytes of mobile usage. Hello, I'm Gary Horn with Horn Solutions. We agree with energy analysts that the energy market has stabilized. We anticipate significant merger and acquisition activity. Good resources are scarce. Horn Solutions is positioned to assist you in accounting, finance, IT, and supply chain. Our staff can assist you with outsourcing or we can supply you with resources to join your staff. Visit hornsolutions.net for details. 
Gary Horn is a highly successful businessman who has made a huge impact in people's lives, and he loves what he does for a living. That's a big reason why Gary Horn and Horn Solutions support Get a Great Gig. Get a Great Gig is a free job search consultation service that will help you find a job you love, whether it's to make more money or get personal fulfillment in the career of your choice. Email them at getagreatgig at gmail.com or on Twitter at getgreatgigs. Hello fans, this is Bradley Stavanaugh with Needville Insurance. We know Fort Bend County. I'm a fourth generation resident of Fort Bend. I'm your local hometown trusted agent. With over 30 carriers and nine auto insurance carriers, we shop the insurance for you. We know insurance is hard. We know it's complicated. We make it easy for you. We have Spanish speakers here available for you. Call us at 979-793-7411 or needvilleinsurance.com. Once again, call us 979-793-7411. You work hard, so you deserve the good things in life, like getting an amazing deal on awesome internet. That's why there's never been a better time to switch to Xfinity. Get the fast and reliable internet you deserve for $19.99 a month for 12 months with a one-year contract. And ask how to score 12 times the speed for the same internet price when you add Xfinity Mobile. Just imagine, faster downloads, more streaming, the possibilities are endless. Plus, you'll save hundreds over AT&T. Or learn how to get a $200 prepaid card when you get gig speed internet during the Xfinity Black Friday sales event. That means powering a house full of devices when everyone's home this holiday season. So what are you waiting for? Sign up now because you deserve awesome internet. Go to Xfinity.com, call 1-800-XFINITY, or visit a store today. Requires paperless billing and auto pay, and 12 6 Restrictions apply. New Connect Internet, 50 megabits per second customers only. Equipment, taxes, and fees extra, and subject to change. After term, regular rates apply. Compares monthly service charge for Xfinity, 600 megabits per second to AT&T, 500 megabits per second, each with one unlimited mobile line for a year as of 10 6 Reduce speeds up to 20 gigabytes of mobile usage. Back here at Hall Stadium, this is Patrick Kinnick along with Kyle Harris. We have... Had a long break here with the, one of the players being injured. It's a high tower defensive man, and we do not know what number he, we, he is and who it is. Both teams are huddled on the sideline right now. Um, I don't know what else to say about that. Uh, Cornelius uh, Anthony, the head coach of uh, high tower, trying to keep his guys focused a little bit, and you know, I'm just being supportive of his have his player Kyle you have any thoughts yeah Patrick uh, all I can say is this is not a good um, incident at all uh, I, I don't know if I've ever seen this so far in my my three months of covering this this high school sports doing this out here I don't think we've had a delay this long so we're all kind of just in shock right now um, being, they... being patient you know keeping, well, keeping this guy's family and, and friends and our in our thoughts and prayers well I think you know a lot of it is they, they want to be cautious they brought the uh, First of all, they brought the cart out, and then they have the. It looks like there's a stretcher out there, and then they brought that. Yeah. I don't know what you call oh, that's that. A, they that. brought a freaking like ambulance minivan out here. Yeah, you know, and then they have like, that. What yeah. do you call those flat uh, board? Kind of a board they put them on sometimes. Yeah, that's uh, got that's a stretcher. Yeah. Well, they have another thing too. It's it's a board mm -hmm. that they'll take, and then they'll put him on the stretcher with that. And I'm just not sure what it is. The entire uh, high tower team is now sort of walking toward uh, the. The player uh, in support, obviously, and then the, the Manville players, it's close to their sideline, and of course, they're very supportive as well. Um, yeah, I have we're a just hoping that it's, you know, hopefully precaution and everything will be okay, but yeah, at this it's point, it's hard to know. Yeah, at this point, the whole high tower bench is, is moved, and they're in the middle of the field now. They're not even on their sidelines at well, this point. I they're can, all kind yeah, of. I, I can definitely tell you that I've never seen this before. Yeah. Both teams are off of their sidelines, semicircle on one side, semicircle on the other. Um, the player and the trainers and the medical staff are right around the 40, between the 45 and the 50 yard line on the Manville side. Um, and nobody really knows, obviously, who the player is and what because we, we we have the tv guys right next to us and they were um they thought they had the number down but they they don't have the number down and like i said when, when patrick's saying it's hard to see his numbers we are high up here it is really hard to see some of these numbers for us unless they're directly in our um per, in our perspective and in yeah. our view so and, and neither one of us saw what happened it was it was a no. it was a say was a play that you see all the time and somewhere in a the mix there was some kind of contact or whatever that 
cause injury here. And yeah, what a delay. Not. But while, while we're at it, Patrick, I, I actually did find some of these uh, some of these scores so yeah, far let's hear going some in the district. Scores, in, our, yeah. in our Region 3 district out here on Max Preps in, in our greater Houston area, we got King losing to Katie today, 41-24. to 24. Uh, obviously, we mentioned that Tompkins North Shore game. North Shore won 26 to 20. Cedar Park and Pateau won 65 to 14. That's going to be uh, who the winner of this game is going to be facing is going to be Pateau winning that. Uh, looks like live in the fourth quarter, we have Columbus 13, Lorena 62. We have Mart winning 55 to 7 over Wortham. And we have a couple games that are still in progress here. China Spring 24, Carthage 17, or Carthage, excuse me. Chilton 26, Bremen 7, LCMHS 14 to El Campo 7, Belleville 17, WOS High School is 19, Texas 27 and PNGHS 7, Strawn 44, Gordon 8, and Dibel 21, LRA 12. Now they're lifting the player now and there's some uh, applause from Everywhere, both, as yeah, you can hear, we're going to turn sides. up the crowd mic for y'all a little bit here. So. The injured high tower hurricane number 33, Jeremy Strotter. Number 33. There it is. Strotter is the man who was injured. He's a defensive back, the senior. And uh, as we said, they're they're taking high precaution, as they should. And hopefully he'll, he'll be okay. Okay. Uh, based on uh, the precautions taken and so on, but prayers for sure for Jeremy Strotter. Hopefully everything will come out all right. Yeah, that's a scary play out here, definitely, and, you know, just want to, you know, give our thoughts and prayers out to his family and all of his teammates and everything out there that are with him, and, and we wish him, and, and everybody, I'm sure, in this in this place wishes him nothing but the best after after that terrible well, it's kind of hard to injury. get yourself back into the game, you know, with you got this going yeah. on. He's on the stretcher. He, I, it appears that they have, uh, they're moving him now. You know, they've uh, stabilized his head and, and so on. So um, that's all we really know. Uh, we've I've seen this on TV before on some of these uh, professional games and college games. You'd hate to see it. And uh, many times these guys. Are okay, and uh, they just uh, are able to get themselves back going. Uh. And so, while we allow all the players to get back to their sidelines, yes. Patrick, we're going to take one more quick yep. break. Don't go anywhere. We should have the game back on Vite Fort Bend. You work hard, so you deserve the good things in life, like getting an amazing deal on awesome internet. That's why there's never been a better time to switch to Xfinity. Get the fast and reliable internet you deserve for $19.99 a month for 12 months with a one-year contract. And ask how to score 12 times the speed for the same internet price when you add Xfinity Mobile. Just imagine, faster downloads, more streaming, the possibilities are endless. Or learn how to get a $200 prepaid card when you get gig speed internet during the Xfinity Black Friday sales event. That means powering a house full of devices when everyone's home this holiday season. So what are you waiting for? Sign up now because you deserve awesome internet. Go to Xfinity.com, call 1-800-XFINITY, or visit a store today. Requires paperless billing and auto pay and 12 6 -21. Restrictions apply. New Connect Internet 50 megabits per second customers only. Equipment, taxes, and fees extra and subject to change. After term, regular rates apply. Reduce speeds after 20 gigabytes of mobile usage. Archer Volkswagen Showroom is open, and our team's excited to help you. Visit our sales department Monday through Saturday from 9 a.m. to 9 p.m. Or bring your car in for service from 7 a.m. to 7 p.m., Monday through Friday, and Saturdays from 9 a.m. to 2 p.m. We're closed on Sundays to rest and recharge with our families, so we can serve you well through the week. We hope to see you soon. First Star and Automotive heard you were thinking of starting your holiday shopping earlier this year, so the season of giving starts now. $15 off oil changes, $100 off four tires, and save on just about any service. Head to the website firsttireandauto.com and claim your savings. First Star and Automotive, a proud sponsor of Fort Bend Vibe Sports. Make your appointment today at any of the four convenient locations in Sugarland and Cinco Ranch. All four stores open on Saturday. Firsttireandauto.com. 
What is Vipe Live? Vipe Live is one of the largest and most respected broadcast and live stream networks in the state of Texas. Vipe Live broadcasts any sport you can think of for youngsters of any age, from Pee Wee and Pop Warner to high school, club, college, semi-pro, and beyond. We also broadcast plenty of academic, fine arts, and community-related events as well, and now as partners with Flow Sports. Email us at info at vipemedia.com to find out more. Vipe Live, we bring your teams to you. Hello fans, this is Bradley Stavenaugh with Needville Insurance. We know Fort Bend County. I'm a fourth generation resident of Fort Bend. I'm your local hometown trusted agent. With over 30 carriers and nine auto insurance carriers, we shop the insurance for you. We're back here at Hall Stadium. We're gonna get to a second and six. It was about 15, 20 minutes since the last play as they took uh, Jeremy Strotter off the field in the ambulance, and hopefully he's all right. Here's the snap, pitch to the right. Seymour has it, and he's going to fight his way, looks like, to a first down. I don't know how he got the first down. He was hit at about the 45-yard line, and he just kept plowing and getting those legs moving, and he got a first down. Great. Yeah, great, great strength run. by Seymour there. Great run for Seymour there. He had some extra help there from sure. some of his also position yeah. players to push him forward there. But yep. yeah, first down as uh, you see Manville moving now in high tower territory on the 39th. Yeah, Manville has had positive plays each each time here. Four receivers to the left now. The quick pass to the left. They've run this to the right a couple of times, and this time it's overthrown as Owens couldn't get it. It was uh, here. They have trips to the left. So three guys are going to be blocking. One guy is going to get the pass, and it's going to be Owens. But this time it went over his head as the pass from Smith kind of sailed on him. That was one of the only negative plays they've had so far. They got the ball on the 25-yard line to start the drive, and they've gotten it down to the high tower 40, 9.36 to play here first quarter. And the Mavericks have a diamond set you got to back behind the quarterback Smith and then a man flanking him each to the right and left here's a handoff to Seymour and he's going to be wrapped up on the line of scrimmage no gain that time good job and down in there is uh, Bradford among others for the high tower hurricanes be third down and 10. yeah and you like to see that and, and before those last two plays patrick uh manville's making the, moving the ball very well they they were gaining yardage every play so here's the big play though third and 10. smith waiting for the snap and now there's a penalty marker on the play and we have movement or is it a delay of game false start so the Manville Mavericks have driven nicely, 35 yards, but now it's going to be third and 15. It's going to be a tough play call for the Mavericks here. Absolutely, you got to let the ball loose on this one. No more, no more parallel, you know, lateral passes now. Yeah, that's the only passes we've seen so far. Here's Smith back to pass, going deep to the right. He's going to overthrow his receiver. He almost had him, Isaiah King. I guess there was another pass long like that one, but I believe there was a penalty on that play earlier. So the Mavericks drive it and get a couple of first downs, but then they stall at the 40, and after losing five more yards, it's at the 45-yard line where they're going to punt. Well, have the first punt of the ball game. Yeah, got to give some big credit to the Hightower defense there after everything that happened, and, you know, with number 33, Jeremy Schroeder, to come out and give a, give a good stop to Manville puts a little bit more momentum on your side as – as we see the punt. Here's the kick, and now there's whistles blowing, and looks like there might have been a delay or uh, motion again or something as uh, Davis is deep for the Hurricanes, along with, well, it looks like Penson. Would that be the guy deep? Would the quarterback be deep? There's number 18, I think, it would be uh, Mendez, I believe. So a uh, false start for the Mavericks, and now they'll be kicking from the 50. And I want to see if I can get the, the punter here. Is it um, uh, Han Hanor? I don't know if I pronounced it right. Here's his kick, a beautiful spiral. It's going to land into the end zone. Call that was that really pretty, though. 50-yard <laughs> kick for... I, yeah, that looked like number... Um, it's number 16. How would you pronounce that? Brooke Han... 
Honor. 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 Just just regular honor. Honor. You know honor. honor. Yeah. yeah. That's what I see it. So yeah, great kick from him. Just a little bit long, bounced in the end zone. It's gonna be a touchback for for Hightower. They're gonna start at their twenty five yard line and let's see what they do. Here's Penson bringing his team out to the to the line now. Yesterday last week's hero, Jeremy Payne in the backfield with him. He had a heck of a game last week. They couldn't stop him. He really did. MVP of that game that we called last week, Patrick, for yeah, sure. That's for sure. Two receivers left and two to the right for Penson. From their own 25, man in motion. Going to be an inside flip pass. It's Johnson. He's going to be sacked. And, well, I shouldn't say sacked, but he's going to be tackled for a loss. Yeah, that was led by number 11, Jack A. Neal, the uh, senior defensive back coming out of that one with a huge tackle for loss. That's going to put him back to, it looks like, close to the 19-yard line. Yeah, it was a six-yard loss. It was an inside, I guess that's considered a pass nowadays. Really? A little flip pass. And uh, he was coming in motion, got the insides flip and he had nowhere to go except backwards and it was a six yard loss not a good start for the high tower hurricanes halfway through the first quarter no score here from hall stadium benson waits for the snap he's got it now rolling to his left with a pass and he overshoots his receiver same that's guy yes caleb johnson again and uh, no go on that one and it's going to be third down and 16 for the hurricanes not what they want here in their own territory at the 19-yard line. Mavericks got about three first downs, I believe, to kind of uh, earn some field position. And if they stop them here, they'll maintain that field position. Penson under center now. Let's see if he stays under center. He does. Handoff. Payne through the left side, and he's grabbed by the shoulder at about the 25, 26-yard line. He picks up about seven yards. Maybe eight, but he's well short of the first down. He had he hit the hole hard, but then he got grabbed and then corralled by the rest of the Maverick line. And let me tell you what I think happened on that drive, Patrick. I think when you come out and you try the lateral play like you did in the first play, and when that doesn't work out and you start six yards back to start that second that second down, it's really hard to work your way back when you uh, when you have a tackle for loss on that first yeah, down. Yeah, you cannot. It's hard to hard to get back after it's. First and 16 or second and 16. Here's mm. the punt. It's like five feet off the ground, but it's rolling. Oh, wow. Look all at the that. way to the 30. Going almost all the way to the 25. They're going to stop it at the 26-yard line for Manville. What that a punt there. That was Douglas who who kicked it. and uh, it looked like a wobbly line drive. It was, the, uh, that ball, that ball didn't go. Field. Yeah, it didn't go, mo it didn't go over 10 feet high. And it just was a little line drive, and it kept rolling, rolling, rolling all the way down to well, the 26-yard line. Yep. Now there's a little discussion going on at the 45 with our referee. Does he have a call of some sort here? He's turning the mic on. Now he's going to go talk again. Looks like it was a, you know, before any of the referees or flags, it was a 50-yard punt there, Patrick. Yeah. With the roll and everything, we went from the 27 all the way to the 26, close to a 50-yard punt. One of the line, one of the... One of the uh, officials picked up his flag, so there must have been a flag on the play, but I had, had I no idea what it would be here. There they go. He's he put back down there to uh, make sure everybody knows there's a penalty on the play. Here it is. I think. Well, <laughs> they're going to talk some more. Yeah, let's see here. That microphone's working. Well, he's got his arms out. What is that? Unsportsmanlike, Unsportsmanlike conduct? Like, yeah, it's got to be on Manville. I wonder what that's all about. It. And look at Hightower. Look at the bench. Oh, <laughs> they're going to exploding gonna, in victory. Well, I think <laughs> they're going to get the first down out of this. I think that's what they're excited about. There was an unsportsmanlike conduct, apparently, against Manville, which wow. a, a looks to be an automatic first down for the Hightower. What a wow. what a play call. That could really come back to bite Manville later as it was a fourth and long for Hightower. It looked like fourth and eight, and now you're going to give him a first down with a unsportsmanlike penalty. I know that coaching staff over at Manville <laughs> cannot be happy over there led by head coach Kevin Hall. They are discussing it with him right now, and I'm sure he's... He's heard the explanation, but he probably I don't know if he agrees with it. Yeah, you're right. I mean, <laughs> you got you got you got Penson out there, and looks like they're gonna. Well, they're now about to start the, the Manville offense is going out there too. What are we gonna do here? 
Manville thinks they have the ball. Hightower thinks they have the ball. Hightower is down at their own 35. Manville's at their own 25. And <laughs> well, <laughs> I'll tell you one thing, Patrick. These better. delays aren't helping <laughs> nothing, man. These delays is, are uh, not been helping. It's been a strange beginning here. Just a little history here on this. this these two teams uh, tied for first uh, in the division. The District 10, 5A, District uh, Division 1, with uh, Paytow, Manville, and Hightower. And uh, Hightower ends up being the third seed. Manville, number two. Paytow has already won today, 65 to 14. 14. And then the winner of this game is going to play them again. It looks like now it is, will be uh, Manville's ball. Let's see. What else we got? Hightower averages 41 points a game, giving up 15 points a game. Manville averages 30 well, 31 points a game and allowing 14, close to 15 points a game. So, um, foul. let's see. Now we're going to get a call. Manville, there's a pump scrimmage, live ball foul. Therefore, we put it at the end of the run, at the end of the kick, and enforce it. So All right. First down, Manville. So Manville gets to keep the ball, but they get, uh, looks like another 10 yards marched against them. So that's a real flip of the field here. To, uh, Manville thought they were going to get good field position, but instead they're at their own 13-yard line. They got two receivers to the right and two to the left. <coughs> it's Caden Smith, the quarterback, waiting for his snap. Six minutes to play here in the first half. First quarter, I should say. Here's an inside handoff. He's got room. 20, 25. He's going to get a first down, and Ty I believe Harris that's Ty Harris. Harris. Yes, Ty Harris got the handoff, and he was able to scramble for, looks like, about six. 13, 14, 14 yards. Yep. A lot of room out there. They've had, Mandel's had pretty good success here. But there's a penalty marker. Oh, well, Manville, another penalty. A push in the back. They're uh, going the wrong direction, are the Mavericks. Wow. Xfinity is a proud sponsor of Fort Bend County and Houston area sports on Fight, FortBend.com within Xfinity Sports Zone uh, Zone app. Watch multiple games at once and track live stats and scores while watching another game. Here's the snap, long throw downfield, incomplete. Xfinity, it's the best sports entertainment experience with Xfinity X1. So that first and uh, 15, well, I guess it's first and 14. Incomplete pass, making it second down and 14 for the Man Manville Mavericks. It's kind of hard to get into the groove of this game here. It's been kind of herky-jerky no at the start here. Whatsoever. Two receivers on either side of the field for the Mavericks. Inside handoff. It's not going to go very far, about two yards. Looks like it might have been uh, Seymour again. Nope, it's Ty Harris. Check that. So that'll be third down and looks like 13, 14 yards for the Mavericks. Hightower trying to hold them here to get some possibly some good field position. Smith waits for his snap. He's back to pass. Looking to his left. Got him and it's going to be incomplete. Tried to hit his receiver um, Andre Thompson, but he overthrew him. So it's fourth down and 14 yards to go, 13 yards to go for the Mavericks, and they're going to be punting. Hightower is going to get pretty darn good field position. Their men are setting up about around the 50-yard line. Real tough for Manville there. That penalty just killed that 14-yard run in the first play, and, you know, they could, just couldn't work their way back, kind of like Hightower in the last drive. Here's the kick. Pretty good looking kick again, fair catch. Signal oh. four, he muffed it, and who has it? I think Hightower got back on it. He had white jerseys surrounding him, and he he's able to come up back up with it. That was uh, uh, Mendez. He uh, muffed that ball and was able to get on it himself. Could have been really bad there. Yeah, yeah, fortunately for the Hurricanes, but they do have great field position starting at the 50 yard line. Douglas is going to go far left. Penson under center with Johnson to the left as well, and one more receiver to the left. Still five minutes, 25 seconds left in this first quarter. 
Here's the handoff. Payne, left side. He's going to get about one yard. Not much doing over there. Pretty good defense by the Mavericks. Looked like uh, Potts was in there. Medlock was in there as well on the tackle. Second down and nine for the Hurricanes. Looking to Payne to eventually explode out and do his usual eight, nine yards per carry on the plays as, as he's been averaging this season. I'm sure the Mavericks were uh, watching the film on that. They got a pretty good key on him, I'm sure, today. Benson waiting from in the shotgun formation now. Looks to the left. Across the middle he goes. It's incomplete, but there's a penalty marker on the play. They blew it dead. So apparently it's going to be against Hightower. Wow, there's been a lot of penalties and stoppages here. False start. Both teams perhaps a little nervous here in the first quarter. Big ball game between the two teams. And uh, looking across the way, uh, this, it's a great crowd on hand as uh, Manville stands are nearly full over there on the far side. And, of course, Hightower has a great crowd here as well. Not only is this a playoff game, but these are district rivals, Patrick. That's so. right, making it, making it even uh, more of a fiercer type game. Here's a quick pass to the right. Payne looking for some room. Got the 50, inside the 50 to about the 47, so a pretty good run after the catch. And a couple of guys for Manville, McLean, and uh, Scranton. Nice little nine-yard nine yard, uh, pass play there to Payne from Penson. It's going to set up a third and about six yards here as they're going to Hightower's going to come out at the 47. Now there's a penalty marker coming in. Flag. Wow. What do we got here? He <laughs> what <laughs> can this be? Uh, maybe there was an illegal substitution, perhaps. Let's see here. Yeah. On the offense, five-yard penalty. Beat the down. It's either illegal substitution or 12 men in the huddle. I'm not sure which, but uh, it'll be third down, and it looks like about 12 now. <clears throat> Manageable. Prior to that penalty, now it's going to be tough for him. Yeah, they were on Manville's 47, and now they're going to be pushed back to their own 48-yard line on this, like you said, about third and 12. Just Let's penalties and false starts, and yep. it's it's been crazy so Let's far this game. see what they can do here. Penson's under center again. Looking for a man in motion. Johnson comes all the way across. It's going to be Payne. Up the middle, he's to the 50, about the 47. They got about those five yards back from the penalty, and that's about it. Looks like they're going to be punting, I would imagine. Yes, they're coming out there to punt. The Hightower Hurricanes are in all green tonight. Green helmets, green jerseys, green pants. Got the little sparkle of uh, their logo, kind of sparkles in uh, silver. Kind of shines in that in the light. Kind of like a mossy dark green though, not like a uh, you know bright, bright. No, no, it's, yeah. it's definitely, it's not the fluorescent. Here's a snap a little high, but Douglas was able to get it. He's a big, tall guy, so he had no trouble getting it. Here's the kick, and it's going to be fair caught at the, well, about the 20, 18 yard line. Colin Wright was able to get that ball. Let's take a short break. No score here in the first quarter. First Star and Automotive heard you were thinking of starting your holiday shopping earlier this year, so the season of giving starts now. $15 off oil changes, $100 off four tires, and save on just about any service. Head to the website firsttireandauto.com and claim your savings. First Star and Automotive, a proud sponsor of Fort Bend Vibes. Here we are back at Hall Stadium. Smith for Manville looking. He's got lots of time. Now he rolls to the right. He's got a man open at about the 25-yard line. It's complete. And it's going to be a catch of about seven yards. Kelby Williams on the reception. He was just standing there at about the 25. Looks like possibly the 26. Second down and two yards to go for Manville. Smith waits for a snap. Quick pass to the right. They've run this a couple of times. He's got his man. He's now he's running all the way across the field. And he stumbles and falls. He's going to lose yardage. That's uh, Owens. Owens has had success on that play a couple of times, but this time he didn't find much, and then he was going horizontal. And now was there something going on before that play? Maybe there was a timeout before the play. Well, there's a timeout on the field right now.
Let's take a short break. 2.21 to play. First quarter, no score. Hello fans, this is Bradley Stavenal with Needville Insurance. We know Fort Bend County. I'm a fourth generation resident of Fort Bend. I'm your local hometown trusted agent. With over 30 carriers and nine auto insurance carriers, we shop the insurance for you. We know insurance is hard. We know it's complicated. We make it easy for you. We have Spanish speakers here available for you. Call us at 979-793-7411 or needvilleinsurance.com. Once again, call us 979-793-7411. You are the master of the multitask, the champion of making it happen. Taking care of business is not for the faint of heart. Still, you take care of it. Taking care of business. But who takes care of you? Office Depot Office Max. We supply you, copy you, and tune you up. Members get 2% back in rewards on everything, and we mean everything. We take care of you, so you can take care of business. Office Depot Office Max. Taking care of business. Archer Volkswagen Showroom is open, and our team's excited to help you. Visit our sales department Monday through Saturday from 9 a.m. to 9 p.m. Or bring your car in for service from 7 a.m. to 7 p.m., Monday through Friday, and Saturdays from 9 a.m. to 2 p.m. We're closed on Sundays to rest and recharge with our families, so we can serve you well through the week. We hope to see you soon. Paul Stadium, we have an injured player. It's Robert Statton, Jr., the um, sophomore defensive end for the High Tower Hurricanes, and they're... Spending a little bit of time over there with him as well. Hopefully he's okay. The last play was a five-yard loss for the Mavericks on a quick pass to Owens. Instead of going up the sidelines, he went horizontal and uh, tried to find some daylight, and he lost his footing and lost five yards. And they're still uh, checking in on Staten. Let's see how these teams got here. Um, playoff results, Hightower beat... Uh, Port Arthur Memorial 24 to 21 in a tight game. They also beat uh, Georgetown last week 45 29 and now uh, <coughs> Looks like Staten's up and walking. He's getting some help It's a little at least, gimpy. At least, Definitely gimpy. At least he's walking somewhat there and Manville beat uh, Beaumont United 56 to nothing then they be defeated Pfluger Pflugerville Weiss 41 to 31. The, aver the Mavs are av averaging 48.5 points per game here in the playoffs. But I don't know if they're going to get 48 points tonight. They uh, No scores so far. Both teams struggling a bit on offense. I guess that's good defense. I was going to say, Patrick, definitely not what we saw last week between Georgetown and Hightower. It <laughs> seemed like those teams couldn't score enough points, and, and Hightower just unfortunately can't get anything going on the first two drives of this game. And yep. With the rhythm and pace of this game, with the injuries and penalties, it's it's throwing not only us off, but all these players off as well. Trust me. Yeah, Stanton is still limping as he goes to the sideline. Hopefully he'll, uh, they can get, get him tended to and maybe get back into the ball game. We'll see. Back here with a third and seven to go. It's Manville back on Hightower's 20-yard line. Here they go uh, from that familiar diamond spot. Here's uh, Smith down the line, right side. It's going to be an interference play. Yep. yep. Wow. Two flags against Hightower it right there. It's going to be a pass interference. Yeah, the pass was underthrown, and now what have we got here? we got another flag as, jeez, <laughs> one of the Hightower uh, defensive men is in the end zone. Was he blocked all the way into the end zone? I don't, it was all the way down to the right side. The pass interference penalty is way down there at around the 35 yard line of the Hurricanes. And there was another penalty after the play as um, Cameron Bradford had his helmet taken off in the end zone behind the play. One of the Manville linemen, I don't know if he just kept blocking too long or what it was, but it was something after the play. So that uh, long interference play could be nullified here. Let's 
See what and another stoppage of play here, Patrick. Kyle. I was gonna say, <laughs> you, at this Gee point, Patrick, you go ahead and let you know everybody know at home you'll be back by midnight because <laughs> we're 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 almost an hour through and we yeah. haven't even got through the first quarter. It so. is amazing. Here's the call here. That's interference on the defense. The 15 yard penalty from the previous spot. After the play, unfortunately, number 70 on the offense. That's his first. So it, it's going to be a penalty. Both penalties are uh, offsetting. Well, it didn't say offsetting, so I think they're going to go 15 yards against the oh, Hurricanes. Let's see. Unfortunately, on number seven, that penalty will now be assessed 15 yards. Manville, first down. Okay, now they said se first they said 70, Manville. Then they said seven. Does that mean... The high tower number seven, which would be Cameron Bradford, and if that's the case, it's going to be a 30-yard penalty. Yeah, because Bradford was coming; he was the one who was in the end zone that had the, the flag thrown. But they he made it seem like it was unsportsmanlike conduct on now on we're, Manville. We're all confused. Let's see this. Oh, you're going to say it again? Is the here? white hat going to say something again? <laughs> yeah, I think he might be trying to clarify it as his coach. Um, yeah. Anthony is, uh, he's beside himself. Go he get some popcorn, Patrick. You mean <laughs> go take a, I'm going to actually go use the restroom real quick. Yeah. I mean, at this point, you know. <laughs> <laughs> now he's going to explain it again. And oh, man. Gee whiz, I don't know here. I, it looked like it might be an off, a penalty against Hightower on the interference, and then maybe a penalty against Man, Manville on the unsportsmanlike. But now it sounds like it might be against both of them against Hightower and this Ref happens a lot. I will say, I will say, I haven't seen a delay as much delays like like this at this game. But I have seen a lot of you know these high school football officiators not being able to get the plays right, and that alone taking five to ten minutes, sometimes even up to fifteen minutes to figure out. All right, well, they've given them fifteen yards. Yeah, and I don't know why. Yeah, they were on the twenty, maybe twenty-one. So, but that's only one penalty. I yeah. don't know what. Yeah, I don't understand it. I don't understand it. You can only think if it's unsportsmanlike. Oh, boy. Wish I knew the rules a little bit better, but they only gave him 15 yards. For the pass interference. Then what happened to the other penalty? Yeah, I guess they <laughs> offset it. I, I agree with you. I I'm, don't know I'm what right happened there. there. With you. I don't Ma know maybe either. they offset the unsportsmanlike. Maybe that's what it was. That, that could that, be it. Yeah, that could be. They, maybe, maybe, they, maybe they gave it to both of those guys. That has to be it because it's first down Mandel, and we're finally ready to go again. Caden Smith waiting for the snap. And it's going to be a handoff up the middle. That's going to be Seymour right side. And he's going to stumble for maybe one, well, maybe a yard. Looks like, a, looks like it's going to be second down and 10. Not much of a gain there. Now the whistle blows again. And they want to, what is going on now? This is unbelievable. We've got to stop at your play. Now what? You going to say something else? I don't think I've ever seen so much. Let's, let's play football, right, Chop Patrick? You choppiness know, I mean. in a game. Oh, so that's a clock issue. Okay. Yeah, let's add some more seconds on the clock. Why not, you know? I would love for this first quarter to go on another 30 minutes, Patrick. Yeah, How is, about you? This is the longest first quarter I believe I've ever been involved in. <laughs> well, here second we go. Second and ten. Yep, second and ten, Manville. Smith waiting for the snap. He's going to go up the middle again. Seymour squirts to the right side. Not much there again. High tower defense doing a great job. And they're going to give him one yard on the play, but a, a host of high tower hurricanes were wrapping him up there. Now we have another player down. And it's might be Seymour. We're going to take a timeout here. Short break, minute and a half to play. One of the Manville players is down. We'll be right back. You work hard, so you deserve the good things in life, like getting an amazing deal on awesome internet. That's why there's never been a better time to switch to Xfinity. Get the fast and reliable internet you deserve for $19.99 a month for 12 months with a one-year contract. And ask how to score 12 times the speed for the same internet price when you add Xfinity Mobile. Just imagine, faster downloads, more streaming, the possibilities are endless. Plus, you'll save hundreds over AT&T. Or learn how to get a $200 prepaid card when you get gig speed internet during the Xfinity Black Friday sales event. That means powering a house full of devices when everyone's home this holiday season. So what are you waiting for? 
Sign up now because you deserve awesome internet. Go to Xfinity.com, call 1-800-XFINITY, or visit a store today. Requires paperless billing and auto pay and 12 6 Restrictions apply. New connect internet 50 megabits per second customers only. Equipment, taxes, and fees extra and subject to change. After term, regular rates apply. Compares monthly service charge for Xfinity 600 megabits per second to at t 500 megabits per second each with one unlimited mobile line for a year as of 10 6 Reduce speeds up to 20 gigabytes of mobile usage. You are the master of the multitask. The champion of making it happen. Taking care of business is not for the faint of heart. Still, you take care of it. Taking care of business. But who takes care of you? Office Depot Office Max. We supply you, copy you, and tune you up. Members get 2% back in rewards on everything. And we mean everything. We take care of you so you can take care of business. Office Depot Office Max. Taking care of business. First Star and Automotive heard you were thinking of starting your holiday shopping earlier this year, so the season of giving starts now. $15 off oil changes, $100 off four tires, and save on just about any service. Head to the website firsttireandauto.com and claim your savings. First Star and Automotive, a proud sponsor of Fort Bend Vibe Sports. Make your appointment today at any of the four convenient locations in Sugarland and Cinco Ranch. All four stores open on Saturday. Firsttireandauto.com. Hello fans, this is Bradley Stavanaugh with Needville Insurance. We know Fort Bend County. I'm a fourth generation resident of Fort Bend. I'm your local hometown trusted agent. With over 30 carriers and nine auto insurance carriers, we shop the insurance for you. We know insurance is hard. Back here at Hall Stadium, third and nine for the Manville Mavericks. No score here in the first quarter. Smith back to pass, looking to the right. He's got a man across the middle. Complete. 45 down to the 41. And it's number 88. It looks like uh, Brighton Menifee on the reception, the senior. He was open there on the right side, and Smith hit him for a nice pickup. Hand off, right side, not going anywhere, is Ty Harris. Bradford was able to get him up by the ankles there and bring him down for no gain. Mavericks had been down in this area once before, and then they stalled right here around the 40-yard line. They're at the 41 now, but they didn't get any further the first time. See if the Hurricanes can stop them again. Second down and 10. Fake handoff this time. Smith still has it. Running to his left. Trying to find some room. Can't find it, but he does muscle his way to about the 36. And now a late hit out of bounds. Oh, boy. Let's see. Dotson was able to get him out of bounds. And then later on, as the play was finishing, one of the Hurricanes came and ran into the play. And Smith's coming out of, the, out of there a little shaken up as well. And I think it was a pretty good call. It was not malicious. But he definitely hit him out of bounds. Jaden Scott doesn't want his name being called for that play, but uh, he did make contact out of bounds there as the, the ball was, well, the play was clearly clearly over. Yeah, but that turns a five yard, you know, run into a 20 yard play right there. And, and now you got, you know, Manville on their on their you know red zone and yep they're threatening now they're at the 20 absolutely Smith has uh, automatic first down Owens to his left and he's got two receivers right and two one to the left hand off to Owens right side five yards fighting for more and he's got about six yards to the 14 yard line and that'll be the last play of the first quarter I believe finally the first quarter is going to come to a close after one quarter here from Hall Stadium, Manville zero and Hightower zero. This is FightFortBend.com. You work hard, so you deserve the good things in life, like getting an amazing deal on awesome internet. That's why there's never been a better time to switch to Xfinity. Get the fast and reliable internet you deserve for $19.99 a month for 12 months with a one-year contract. And ask how to score 12 times the speed for the same internet price when you add Xfinity Mobile. Just imagine, faster downloads, more streaming, the possibilities are endless. Plus, you'll save hundreds over AT&T. Or learn how to get a $200 prepaid card when you get gig speed internet during the Xfinity Black Friday sales event. That means powering a house full of devices when everyone's home this holiday season. So what are you waiting for? Sign up now because you deserve awesome internet. 
Go to Xfinity.com, call 1-800-XFINITY, or visit a store today. Requires paperless billing and auto pay and swap 621. Restrictions apply. New Connect Internet, 50 megabits per second customers only. Equipment, taxes, and fees extra and subject to change. After term, regular rates apply. Compares monthly service charge for Xfinity 600 megabits per second to AT&T 500 megabits per second, each with one unlimited mobile line for a year as of 10 621. Reduce speeds up to 20 gigabytes of mobile usage. First Star and Automotive heard you were thinking of starting your holiday shopping earlier this year, so the season of giving starts now. $15 off oil changes, $100 off four tires, and save on just about any service. Head to the website firsttireandauto.com and claim your savings. First Star and Automotive, a proud sponsor. Back here at Hall Stadium, and the Mavericks have a second and five from the high tower 14. Smith back to pass, looking to the right. Into the end zone. He's got him, but he overthrew him. Just overthrew him on that one. Yep. That was Andre Thompson who tried to stretch out for that pass, but it was just out of his reach. It'll be second, third and goal. Excuse me, third and five. They got it marked at the 15. Just want to give you all a quick update. Yeah, give us that we, update. I know we just started the second quarter here, but but Ridgepoint at Tuscasita is already almost at the half. A Tuscasita just scored a touchdown. They are leading ten to nothing over Ridgepoint. Ten nothing over the about over one the, minute left in the first half. Over the Ridgepoint Panthers. We got a third and five here for the Mavericks at the high tower fifteen. Here is the snap. Smith being rushed. He's running to his right, looking for the first down. He might get it. He's to the ten. And he's inside the 10 to about the 6-yard line. He scrambled out of there. He had pressure early, and then he just took off. He did a nice job of running down inside the 10 to the 6. Yeah, 9-yard run there for, for and Smith, and, and now they're on the 6-yard six, six line, and, and it looks like they're pressing, almost going to score a touchdown here. They're knocking on the door for sure now as we've reached the second quarter finally. Hightower had all that pressure, though, coming on Smith's left side. He just took over the right and had enough open space to, to get that first down. Here's that shotgun snap. Handoff up the middle. Number 23, that's Harris. And he, he was able to maybe get a yard, but probably looking more like the line of scrimmage. No gain on the play. It'll be second and goal now from the six. Hurricanes trying to put on a good defensive stand here inside the 10. And that is something we saw a lot last week, Patrick, with, with Georgetown. They had a lot of plays down there in the red zone, and, and Hightower Hurricanes were able to stand strong that defense. Here's the, the snap. Got a, got him jumping offside. Here's the throw into the corner of the end zone. Incomplete, but I think they got the yeah. Hightower Hurricanes to jump on that. And let's make sure. I think they did, too, because if it was the – if it was um, – Manville, they would have uh, they would have called the play dead. So yeah, they gave they him a free play there, and that's yep. gonna that's gonna put him on the one. Let's see. Well, it might be half the distance. Oh, Let's you're see. You're right. You're right. Yep. Let's see if they'll. Uh, I think we think it's offside, Hurricanes, but we've seen uh, different things going on tonight that we're not sure about. But they are marching it against. Offside. So three yard penalty. This is a good time for me to. This reminds me of this, the play from last week where. Is it not Trey Lon first down there? Bellany took it for 80 yards for a touchdown. Here's the handoff. No going there for Ty Harris. Ty Harris. Harris. And it's going to be third down and goal. I was just mentioning that uh, this is uh, about the area where Georgetown was last week when they fumbled, and Trey Lon Bellany was able to scoop the ball up and run the full distance of the field. And we want to pro apologize for mispronouncing his name last week. Uh, on a great play. We were over here yelling baloney, baloney. <laughs> Here's the uh, fake pass. He's going to run it in. Smith is going to score. He couldn't see anybody open. He decided to use his wheels, and he danced into the end zone for the first touchdown of the game. Manville leads 6-0 right now over Hightower. Nice run by Smith and the crowd over there on the far side sharing their uh, enthusiasm on that play. They got a big crowd over there. I think it's the most people I've ever seen at Hall Stadium. Uh, it's just a great crowd to see. Here's Rodriguez for the extra point. Honor is going to receive the ball. High snap, brings it down, and the kick is up, and it's good. Well, we're in the second quarter. Ten and a half to play here in the second quarter. We have our first points. Mandel seven, high tower, nothing. 
What is Vipe Live? Vipe Live is one of the largest and most respected broadcast and live stream networks in the state of Texas. Vipe Live broadcasts any sport you can think of for youngsters of any age, from Pee Wee and Pop Warner to high school, club, college, semi-pro, and beyond. We also broadcast plenty of academic, fine arts, and community-related events as well, and now as partners with Flow Sports. Email us at info at vipemedia.com to find out more. Vipe Live, we bring your teams to you. You are the master of the multitask, the champion of making it happen. Taking care of business is not for the faint of heart. Still, you take care of it. Taking care of business. But who takes care of you? Office Depot Office Max. We supply you, copy you, and tune you up. Members get 2% back in rewards on everything, and we mean everything. We take care of you, so you can take care of business. Office Depot Office Max. Taking care of business. Rodriguez is ready to kick it off for Manville, and Jalen Mendez is deep for the Hurricanes. It's 7-0 Mavericks. Second quarter, it's a short kick. It's going to be received on the 25-yard line, and he's out of bounds at about the 30, and I'm just trying to make sure who that is. It's hard to see his number. It looks like it might have been uh, Davis who was able to get that ball, field it, scramble for a couple of yards to the 30. Hurricanes have yet to establish themselves on offense here tonight. It's been a rough go. Give yeah, credit to the Maverick defense. It has. They've had two drives. The first one, they, they tried that lateral, had a six-yard yep. loss, and couldn't yep. work their way back. And then the last one, just a bunch of penalties, false start, illegal substitutions, and yeah. they couldn't work their way back from those. So here they are now at their own 30. Penson under center. Pitch to the left, Payne. Trying to find some room, can't find any. And he's able to maybe get back to the line of scrimmage. The first man to hit him down there for the uh, Mavericks looked like uh, Neal. He hit him first, and then a couple of other Mavericks were able to clean up the tackle. Second down and 10 now for the Hurricanes. And Penson's been under center a number of times tonight. Last, last week, I think he was from the shotgun most of the time. Here's Douglas in motion. And off to Payne, up the middle. He's gonna get about, well, he's still going. Five, seven yards as he was able to fight his way through the pile of players. Keep those legs moving and he got seven yards on the play. This could be third down and three. Yeah, and I'm waiting to see Jeremy Payne get started because like we said, with his per carries per, per yardage so far this game, is, or for this season, it's been close to nine. He hasn't you know, got started very much this game, but he was such an MVP candidate yep. in that last game and, and hopefully Hightower is trying to get him started here as he gets a nice seven yard run breaks three or four tackles and brings him up to their uh 37 yard line third and seven Penson under under center again he's got three receivers well he's got two receivers to the right and his back is pain behind him and now there was some movement some motion some I don't know if it's, it's got to be a false start. <laughs> yep. The whistle blows again. It's almost uh, it's almost like a preseason scrimmage out here with all these penalties and uh, false start. False start. And uh, Kyle, you had alluded to it earlier uh, on that last drive. The the penalties just killed them. I mean, it, and they're gonna and probably they, kill them this time too, Roger. Yeah. I mean, you just put yourself in going from a third and short situation to a third and long now. Yep. I mean, that's not a recipe for success if you're high tower. And this is the third round of the playoffs, fourth round of the playoffs. you got to get this this taken care of on the offensive end. Yeah, they're hoping to kind of get themselves settled in here. It's uh, third and eight now. It was third and three. Penson, shotgun. He's got it looking to the right. Got a man open. It's caught. It's Douglas. He's going to get the first down and more. Nice little stiff arm there at the yep, end there for Douglas. He got into the 43-yard line and a first down catch. I I really feel like they got to use Douglas more. He's such a big receiver. And when he gets that ball, he's he's electric. He finds a way to make yardage after the after the catch. It's hard to hard to handle for a defensive person. Nice little 15-yard uh actually not 15 yards, excuse me, 11-yard uh, gain there for Douglas on that one. Is that the first first down for yeah, Hightower? Yeah, good, yeah. good call, Patrick. It yeah. actually is their first first down. Here's yes, Douglas in motion. Payne's got it, and he's not going to go anywhere again. Boy, oh boy, that Maverick defensive line yeah. is stout tonight, and I would imagine 
most of the season. Uh, I can't even give you the number of the person who made the tackle because there was about five guys yeah. in there. Yeah, it's a, it's a huge team effort for them, and they, they can tell when they when the high tire comes in that formation with bringing Penson down there under center and, and paying the backfield. You know, they've been running running plays through there, and yep. and it hasn't fooled the Mavericks at all. No, and, and Payne, as you mentioned, he just has not gotten – he had that seven-yard gain, gain, but everything else has been basically zero yards. Here's a snap. That's it's snap. short. Penson's got it. He had to feel it off the ground, and he just decided to run to the left, and he was able to pick up good yardage. But there's another penalty marker on the play, and what is this one going to be? It, 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 the snap was, it almost seemed like it was too early or something, and it kind of rolled back to Penson, who had to scoop it up like a shortstop, and then he had to just run with it. Now we got another, this is the scene of the ball game. The referee huddled up with other officials trying to figure out what the penalty is. Now, I can't tell you what it's going to be. It almost looked like it would, could have been an offensive penalty the way the flag was offside, though, is the call against Manville. I would say you want to take that penalty. They continue it to be second down. Let's see what they, they, see what they do here. Now they're going to go talk to Coach, um, Coach Anthony here. Cornelius Anthony. Here's the call again. Offside. Okay, why would he decline that? Because I think he got a little bit more than five yards on that run, um, if I'm not mistaken. That's the only reason why he would. Yeah, yeah, because they were at the 40. They were at the 42. Or no, no, no. Okay, I would just yeah. say. I would just say. Look at that. Because now it's a th now it's a second and three rather than it being a second and or a second and five. You see what I'm saying? He got two more yards than that five yards. Okay, look. If if it was second down, and it would it would it now was be, second down. Yeah. It would now be third down and three, rather than yes. second. I would say you have to take the penalty, so it's still second down. And I think that's what they're going to do. I think oh, they're going to yeah. re redo it. So, so the down remains second. Mm -hmm. So it'll be second and five rather than third and three. I see, I see what you're saying. Yeah. yeah, you're right about that, Patrick. They, they would. And it looks like they're just going to go the five yards and back the line up a little bit. Yep. Yeah. Because you hate to get – you want two plays to get that first down rather than one. And, yes, you got a couple extra yards to go here. But uh, second and five is – is a pretty good situation for your offense. They're at their own 47-yard line. Hightower Hurricanes have yet to be able to get on the scoreboard. See if they can do it in this drive. Payne, he's off to the left now as he comes out of the backfield. Here's a pass downfield going for Payne, and he's knocked down. Yeah. Oh, my goodness, by, Three flags by McLean. <laughs> McLean just knocked him down as it looked like Payne was going to go up the sideline for a uh, wheel route. <laughs> And uh, next thing you know, he's lying on his back at the 40-yard line, and the ball's flying around the 25-yard line. Should be a pass interference given well, 15 that yards. Well, at least an illegal yeah. uh, contact. Yep. Number two on the defense. <laughs> yeah, it'll be a first, first down for the high tower, 15-yard penalty. And one of the Mavericks was indicating it was an uh, uncatchable ball. Well, yeah, it was uncatchable because <laughs> he got knocked down. And he wouldn't, he wouldn't even come close to the play because he got knocked down. So it's a first down for the Hurricanes. We'll take them any way we can get them. Now they're on, now they're on Manville's 37-yard line after that 15-yard uh, pass interference call. And here goes Penson. He's back to pass again, looking downfield. Now he's rushed. He's running out of the pocket. He's going to pick oh. up. Ooh. So you got as close to a horse call. And, I and think they're going to the call the yep. <laughs> other penalty marker. Look hey. at the offensive lineman. He's, he's <laughs> well, he was grabbed by the, looked like maybe by the helmet. It was a weird tackle. Looked like he got him around the shoulders, but he might have got him by the helmet. And he kind of brought him down. They're going to, looks like they might be calling the horse collar, as you indicated, Kyle. He picked up yeah, five like on the player. Picked up five on the play, and then now they're going to add some more to it, it looks like. Face mask. Face mask, okay. okay. Yeah, he, he came down, uh, he was coming down pretty awkwardly, and it apparently it's because of the face mask being grabbed. But he ran five yards before the face mask, so they said after the after the five yards, it's going to be 15 should yards. Be, uh, yeah, it should be five plus the 15. They so they were on the 37, give him five yards, that's 32, 17 yard line? All the way to the 17. Yep. The Hurricanes in business now, they trail seven to to nothing with seven and a half to play here in the first half. 
but they're marching aided by a couple of penalties here's Penson back to pass now he's scrambling to her left he's gonna get to the 15 yard line where he's pushed out of bounds it'll be a two yard gain or close to a two yard gain run out of bounds there by um, uh, Medlock and he did a good job of holding him up trying to show some sportsmanship there second down and eight for the Hurricanes trying to get back to even here after the Mavericks score earlier here in the second quarter there was no points in the first quarter and now with Penson coming in down under center here I think it's gonna be another run play to pain that's what they've been doing all night so far this time they're gonna fake it he's rolling to his right being pressured and he try tries to hit pain in the flat he under threw him but give credit to the Mavericks there for not only putting pressure in it but they were they were right on pain as soon as they saw him break out of that out of yeah. that line and they were on him you know even if he would have caught that ball he still would have maybe got two or three yards on that due to the way the Mavericks played that yeah, he would have uh, definitely had a hard time getting that first down <laughs> Hurricanes now have a third and eight from the 15 yard line they're looking at their wrists every single one of them. <laughs> yeah looking at their wrists for the for the play call here two receivers go off to the right that's uh, Johnson and Adams you got Douglas to the left nobody in the backfield no pain pains in the back oh the back oh, excuse yeah. me uh, it's uh, <laughs> He's under center again. You thought that was Penson in the yeah, backfield. Yeah, yeah, under center. <laughs> now what do we have, a timeout maybe? They threw a flag in the in the end zone. I don't but delay it a game. delay a game. Wow. Man, oh, man. Again, Kyle, the penalties are killing the Hightower Hurricanes. Delay a game that time. <coughs> yeah, they had a false start earlier in the drive as well. <laughs> that brings the ball back to the 20, and it'll be a third and 13. Real tough situation for the Hurricanes here. They go to the sidelines. Uh, wasn't a timeout, but they all kind of went over to the sideline. Got their instructions. Penson's under center again. Two receivers to the right, one to the left. That's Douglas to the left. Payne in the backfield. It's going to be a fake to Payne. Penson being rushed down to the right side. Is it caught? Wow. Touchdown, Hurricanes. What a catch. Is that Caleb Johnson? Caleb Johnson on the reception. He went down and got it. Penson got the ball out of there, being rushed pretty heavily there. Yeah, Patrick, I was going to say the the he was there was a man on Ma on the Mavericks coming for Penson's head right there, and and his able to evade that man, and then on the run throw that ball 20 yards down the field to Caleb Johnson, who had to dive for that ball and get it in front of him. What a play! Yeah, I mean it was a to. very close one. We had to close one. be sure that he caught that ball. He got yeah. down, got his hands underneath that ball, dove for it. What a catch, 7-6, and we got the extra point coming, and one of the Hurricanes uh, special teams persons is not on the field. They have to call a timeout. And yeah. Don't uh, want to pick up another delay of game. No, we do not, not I'm here. Not sure. This Vipe presentation of I'm Fort down. Bend Hightower down. Playoff Football is being brought to you by Xfinity, the future of awesome and also by First Tire and Automotive with four great locations in Fort Bend County. For the best prices on tires and everything else your vehicle needs to run at the very best, visit FirstTireAndAuto.com. We're also being brought to you by Archer Volkswagen on the Southwest Freeway, just inside the Sam Houston Tollway. They've been open since 1956, and they're ready to serve you. You'll feel like family when you're at Archer Volkswagen. We're also being brought to you by the Needville Insurance Agency. You get the very best rate on your car and home insurance when you put the Needville Insurance Agency to work for you. Bradley Stavanaugh and his team shop dozens of carriers so you can pay the lowest premium possible. Call them at 979-793-7411 or go to needvilleinsurance.com. We're going to get to the extra point now. Ventura is out there with Douglas ready to hold. Uh, they had one player short, so they had to call a timeout. Here's the, hopefully, the tying extra point here. They wait for the snap. Good snap. Ventura is ready to kick it. He's got it up there, and it's good. 7-11 to play here in the first half. Your new score, the Mavericks 7 and the Hurricanes 7. You are the master of the multitask. 
the champion of making it happen. Taking care of business is not for the faint of heart. Still, you take care of it. Taking care of business. But who takes care of you? Office Depot Office Max. We supply you, copy you, and tune you up. Members get 2% back in rewards on everything, and we mean everything. We take care of you, so you can take care of business. Office Depot Office Max. Taking care of business. First Star and Automotive heard you were thinking of starting your holiday shopping earlier this year, so the season of giving starts now. $15 off oil changes, $100 off four tires, and save on just about any service. Head to the website firsttireandauto.com and claim your savings. First Star and Automotive, a proud sponsor of Fort Bend Vibe Sports. Make your appointment today at any of the four convenient locations in Sugarland and Cinco Ranch. All four stores open on Saturday. Firsttireandauto.com. Back at Hall Stadium, where the Hurricanes have just tied the score. Halftime score, uh, Rich Point down to Atascacita, 10 to nothing. Roger Smith over there calling that one from the Houston campus, University of Houston. Here's the kick. It's kind of a wobbly kick. Left, right side being fielded at the five yard line to the 20, 25 goes O'Neal and now he's wrapped up around the 27 yard line. Good little return but uh, I think the Hightower Hurricanes are satisfied with that one as well as uh, the kick was booted over there by Guzman. Absolutely yeah and I have a little bit of uh, the key plays from that Hightower drive for the touchdown. Had a seven yard run by Jeremy Payne early on then you had Penson connect with Douglas on an 11-yard run, had a pass interference as well as a face mask that gave him 30 yards, and then that 20-yard play from Penson to Johnson to finish out that drive for Hightower, 7-7 over here at Hall Stadium. Seven minutes to play here in the half. Smith waiting for the snap. Hand off to the left side. Not much going on over there. Great job by the Hightower Hurricanes as Ty Harris had nowhere to go when he lost three yards on the play. Wow. He got a four-yard loss. Yeah, Ty Harris has been has been having a pretty good day so far on the ground here, so got to give credit to the Hightower defense as Manville is up to the line in a hurry. Second down of 14 to go from their own 24. Smith looking to the left, across the middle now. He's got his man, does he make the catch? Looks like he does. Caught there by Manaphee. Menifee made a nice catch. He went down low to get it. It's, the catch was made at about the 35-yard line. It'll be third down and three for the Mavericks. 11-yard pass play there for the Mavericks. Smith waits for the snap in the shotgun position. Up the middle, he's not going to go anywhere. As the Hurricanes stop him, Owens had nowhere to go. Good job by the Hurricanes. Wow. Yeah, and he's slow to get up there, but he's going to get up and walk off the field. Is That's going to put them in a fourth and long situation. And I was not, unable to get the numbers of those players who made the tackle for the Hurricanes. Uh, got them in the backfield, and one guy had them on their ankles, and the other two came and finished them off for a loss of uh, about three, three yards. Yep. Here's the snap. The kick honor is going to kick it. It's going to land at the 30, and it's going to roll all the way down inside the 15. Wow, what a inside nice Inside the 10. What a kick. He got a good roll. And the Hurricanes are going to start way down there at the, about their 7-yard line, maybe the 8. Looks like they're going to mark it at the 8. 5.31 to play here in the first quarter, uh, first half. 7-7 seven, seven is our score. Don't miss the UIL Football State Championships starting Wednesday, December 15th at AT&T Stadium in Arlington. Ticket information and more can be found at UILTexas.org. 60-yard punt there for Manville to put Hightower all the way back to their 8-yard line with 5 minutes and 30 seconds left to go in the half. Let's see if Hightower can do anything in this drive. Well, they'd love to go marching for about 92 yards. Let's see if they can Put something together here. Penson up the middle. Payne, he's got some room. He's got the 15, 20, 25. He's still going. 30. He's still going. 50. He's still on his feet. He's pushed out of bounds inside the four. Nope. Is he nailed? Nope. He's still nope. going. Touchdown. Touchdown.
touchdown. There he is, Payne, Jeremy Payne. Finally found his room, and he went 92 yards. What you. a run. I told you, Patrick, I was just waiting to come. That dude doesn't average 10 yards a carry. Wow. You know, only getting seven or zero yards per game, and there that's why. Well, that's I why. thought he got pushed out of bounds there. And that's what Manville's uh, arguing on the sideline because that was close to their sideline. But he did. On that right side. But, but they're saying he didn't. And Apparently. it looks like they're going to kick the uh, extra point here. Wow. I thought, you know, I was I was saying he got pushed out of bounds. Yeah. But then nah, he, he was on his feet. Going. He just kept on going, Patrick. <laughs> oh, jeez. Yep. Unbelievable run. But look at them. They're having For some troubles Jeremy Payne. to get everybody out there on high yeah, tide. Yeah, this side. is the there same problem they had on the extra yep. point last time. 92-yard run for Payne. And he was able to stay in bounds on the sideline after being pushed. Looked like he was pushed out of bounds, but he kept his balance. Here's Benchira's kick. It's up and it's good. And just like that, the Hurricanes now lead 14-7. We're going to take a short break with 5.14 to play here in the second quarter. Hey, high schoolers, are you interested in a career in sports media? Vipe can help. Launched in 2017, our Vipe U Ambassador Program is a one-of-a-kind educational scholarship program that offers high school students a chance to gain hands-on experience in the sports media field. Vipe U also gives students a platform to build their portfolio of creative work under the guidance of Vipe's seasoned professionals. From covering games to publishing photos, writing articles, and conducting on-camera interviews, each Vipe U ambassador receives an immersive experience geared toward their interests while promoting their own school and preparing them for their future. Email info at vipemedia.com to find out more about Vipe U today. We're back at Hall Stadium after that tomorrow. Beautiful run by Jeremy Payne. I was going to say, Patrick, I think you called it right there before the run, you know, <laughs> saying Hightower, you know, going to need to go a little 92 yards, yeah. and that's exactly what he did right there, Jeremy Payne. I was saying they were going to be able to try to march that drive, and they <laughs> it was more than a march. It was, uh, on a full -on it was a streak. It. Yeah, it was a sprint for the touchdown. Jeremy Payne, here's the kick from Guzman to the left side. Corralled over there by O'Neill. Up the left side he goes. He's only about the 20-yard line. I uh, apologize for not being able to uh, totally correctly call that. I, it sure looked like he was knocked out of bounds somewhere around the 30, 25-yard line or somewhere in there. It was close. It was but close. he yep. hung in there, and yep. uh, Kyle was right on top of that one. He's still going. He's still going. Yeah, no, nah, Manville, <laughs> he, he, you know, he, he really pushed him, and he tried to get him out of bounds. But, you know, you got to give credit to Jeremy Payne yeah. and that strength and speed of yeah, his to, he really showed speed. to not even fall over, I mean, but to continue to stay in bounds and just hug that sideline all it's, the way down to the end zone. It's hard to know exactly – you know how close they are to the sidelines and he's yeah. able to keep his feet in bounds and there was no question about it not much uh, arguing or anything from the Manville coaches here's Smith he's up the middle on a scramble and he's still going almost to the 40 yard line and was there a late hit over there doesn't well, look like they're gonna, they're gonna throw it but uh, it was pretty close to a late hit over there by Hightower but they they looked out on this one I don't I think that I honestly think the referees are tired of throwing that flag Patrick <laughs> yeah. to be honest with you want to keep it in the in the pocket absolutely uh, on Payne's run he was able to find some daylight up the middle and then around the 40 he showed his speed and he just started out running his the defensive players and then kept on going for that 92 yarder here's the Snap to Smith, looks left, back to the right, now to the left. He's scrambling, and he's going to scramble for five yards, maybe six yards out of bounds. 4.57 to play here in the first half. <coughs> Mavericks got on the board first with no scoring in the first quarter on a, in a long uh, hodgepodge-type first quarter. And then Manville scores 7 to nothing. Hightower comes back, 7-7. Seven, seven. They stop the Mavericks. Great punt. 92 yards away, and they score on that long run. Here's the handoff, and it's a good, good run. Five yards, six, seven, he's still going. That's Ty that is Harris. Ty Harris. That's uh, one of his better runs tonight. He got a first down inside the high tower 50, inside the 50 into the high tower territory at about the 46. Nine-yard run right there for Ty Harris, and he's been able to move the move the ball and move the chains for this Manville offense. The uh, 
ninth consecutive first down for him, or the ninth uh, first down. I think they have more first downs than Hightower, but that, yeah, they do. They but do. That big, big 92-yarder. Uh, you don't need any first downs on that. Looks to the right, back to the left, Smith, and it's caught on the left side. He's still going. That's number eight, and it's uh, Williams, Kelby Williams. He's going to get about six yards on the play. And he was uh, banged around like a pinball machine there a little bit, but he was able to hang out of the ball. Let's call it second five. Yep, that's exactly what it is, Patrick. Sometimes uh, the chains indicate one thing and the scoreboard another, but it's looking like five. It's Smith waiting for the snap and the shotgun. Looks to the right. Nobody there. He's running again. Now he's going to hit his man right at the 31, and he's going to make the catch and then get out of bounds. And a catch is made by Andre Thompson. Smith was running as if he was going to scramble. Then he stopped short of the line, and he hit Thompson, who was just standing there at the 30-yard line, 31-yard line, wide open. And they've marched it all the way to the 27. They're trying to answer the high tower points here. Handoff O'Neal up the middle. He's got a lot of room. 20, 15. He's short of the first 15 by about two yards. Looks like it's going to be marked right around the 17-yard line. That was T Ty Harris. I think I said you said O'Neal. That's okay. Ty though. Harris on the handoff, and he found some room up the middle, and he he's got all the way up there to the 16. It looks like. Yeah, I got a first down. They're going to mark it at the 16. Give him an 11-yard run there for Harris. Smith now looks to the sideline. Harris to his right, two receivers to the right, two to the left. Shotgun, and now false start. Oh, false start. Possible. <laughs> the linemen so, were yep. well. Were they drawn off? Let's see. Let's see. Or were they? Did the high tower men cause them to move? Well, <laughs> I saw the referee on the Manville side definitely signal uh, signaling false start. So yeah, I would okay. be surprised if it's going to be. Everybody's pointing at everybody down there, and the uh, yeah, they're backing up. <laughs> the linemen for the the ball didn't come out in the. Two or three of the linemen for the Mavericks came out as if they were going to block. So it's going to put them back on their 21 first, and it's going to be 15 for the Mavericks here. But, yeah, just like you said, Patrick, they have converted 11 first downs in this first half. Hightower, only three. But it doesn't uh, doesn't always have to be that way. Is the score 14 Hightower, 7 Manville. That's Got about right. three minutes left. Smith has the ball. He's being rushed. Flush to the left. He's going to run now. 20. Flag on the play. He's going to go all the way into the end zone, but I believe it's going to be called back. Yep, and you see it, the offensive lineman right there. Number 77 for the Mavericks. That's going to be Tevin Shaw, the senior offensive lineman, banging his hand on the ground because I think he knows it's a hold. Well, Possibly on him, but on, he well, he knows it's going to be a hold on one of his teammates as, as everybody's coming back here. Here's the call. They're definitely coming back. Personal foul. Illegal hands to face on the defense. Oh, oh, wow. oh my goodness. Wow. Everybody now was that, fooled. That was not what I expected. Everybody on was fooled by that one because we thought it was coming back. And, uh, boy, Caden Smith found a gap to the left, and he scored on the, what was it, about a 20, what was that, 23-yard That run? was a 21-yard 21 21 run, yard Patrick. run, yep. and the flag came in where you would expect holding. And it was yeah, not it, holding. It definitely came in with I was I was expecting holding for sure. I mean, even the Manville offensive lineman was banging his hand on the ground because <laughs> he was upset that Here's they were going to get called to hold. Here's Rodriguez on the extra point to tie it, and it is good. Well, we've got some points. We got a little bit of fireworks going on in here. It's 2:57 to play here in the half. We'll take a short break. The score: 14 to 14. You work hard, so you deserve the good things in life like getting an amazing deal on awesome internet. That's why there's never been a better time to switch to Xfinity. Get the fast and reliable internet you deserve for $19.99 a month for 12 months with a one-year contract. And ask how to score 12 times the speed for the same internet price when you add Xfinity Mobile. Just imagine, faster downloads, more streaming, the possibilities are endless. Plus, you'll save hundreds over AT&T. Or learn how to get a $200 prepaid card when you get gig speed internet during the Xfinity Black Friday sales event. That means powering a house full of devices when everyone's home this holiday season. So what are you waiting for? Sign up now because you deserve awesome internet. 
Go to Xfinity.com, call 1-800-XFINITY, or visit a store today. Requires paperless billing and auto pay and 12 6 Restrictions apply. New Connect Internet 50 megabits per second customers only. Equipment, taxes, and fees extra and subject to change. After term, regular rates apply. Compares monthly service charge for Xfinity 600 megabits per second to at t 500 megabits per second each with one unlimited mobile line for a year. Back here at All Stadium, here's a pop-up kick. Is it going to be caught? Yes, right side, 25-yard line, trying to find some room. Not much is Davis. He made the catch, and he was able to get about two, three yards for the Hightower Hurricanes as uh, Rodriguez popped it up. Short kick, and the Hurricanes will now have the ball on their own 28-yard line, I believe is where they're going to mark it. 2.52 to play here in the first half. Both teams finding their they're footing a little bit here on offense. 14 points for each team here in the second quarter after both teams put some donuts on the board in the first quarter. Maybe the jitterbugs are out of the system now. Here's Penson, shotgun, fake to Payne. Up the middle he goes, being rushed, and he slides for a gain of, looks like, six yards as he slides at the 34-yard line. He shot out of there quickly after being pressured and then he decided to go down to the knee or to the sliding position so he didn't take a big hit. And the clock is continues to tick down for Hightower here r right under two and a half minutes left here in this second quarter. I'm going to be interested to see if they get Payne involved here with such little time. Here's the handoff to Payne and he's going to be tackled in the backfield. Whoa boy. Big number 40. Woodley was one of the guys in there early on the tackle. And he had a little bit of help from some teammates. Armstrong was in there. That was a loss of, uh, looks like a yard. As Payne got hit early, and then he was able to fight to just get to the one-yard loss. Third and five. Now, it's a big play because uh, Mavericks could get the ball back at the end of the half. Still a minute, 45 seconds left on the clock. I think the Mavericks have all their timeouts, too. If I remember right, here's a pass from Penson. Johnson, 35, and he's going to be ridden out of bounds. Looks like short of the first down at about the 36, maybe the 37. He looks to be about a yard short of the first down. They got the three marker over there on the sideline, or the, the fourth down marker on the side there. Fourth and one. Boy, you want to go for it, yeah. but if you don't get it. You know, it's interesting, Patrick. If Payne didn't have that one-yard loss, and he would have got back to the line of scrimmage. Hightower would have a first down. Right yeah, here. that's interesting, yeah. It's fourth and one from their own 37. It's just one of those things. If you don't get it, then Manville has excellent field position. I think boy, the, oh boy, you'd hate to. I think the players are trying to convince the coaches on the sideline to go for it is what they're doing, but I don't <laughs> I don't know if the coach is going to let him, and now Hightower is going to call a timeout. Timeout, Hightower. Timeout, Hightower. Because, because you see Penson over there with the big group of guys over by the coaches down on their sideline, and there you could see him, you know, a little animated arguing with them, trying to, I, I, in my personal opinion, I think they're trying to convince him to go for it. Well, at least they could maybe at least try to draw him off side maybe. Yeah. You know, um. Yeah, but just like you said, I mean, there's a minute 30 left. you got to realize you're on your own 37-yard yeah. line. If you don't get this first down, yeah. you're giving Manville a it's great field percentage big. with all three timeouts left and a minute 30 to work with. And they're going to punt here as Penson took his helmet off yep. in disgust there. I and I get that. I get that the players are frustrated. They want to prove that they can get that one yard just like anybody else can. But if you're the coach, I think it's a smart play. Yeah. Because with you, it being tied like this, you'd rather go in the half tied and maybe, yeah. you know, without trying to risk it than risking it and possibly being down seven. Colin, Colin Wright is deep for the Mavericks. And Douglas is going to be kicking for the uh, Hurricanes. Yeah, big momentum swing if you don't get this first down. I, I think it's the right call here. It's tough, but you got to do it. And oh. Douglas, he was going to punt it. Now he's trying to run, and he's way back inside his 20. Oh, oh my goodness, good. what is he doing? This is he's not at good. The, oh, he's going to be tackled. No, he's no. still on his feet. 25. Now he throws <laughs> it, and it's going to be a first down for the Hurricanes. <laughs> Unbelievable, he's still going. 
and now he's being pushed out of bounds. I think it's going to be a first down. Now we have a penalty marker. It's probably going to be illegal lineman downfield. And I oh think it's yeah, after the play. Gracious. I mean, yeah, uh, he just. Oh, man. That was like a, a guy. <laughs> it's like, you, you know, Patrick, when you see those guys get on the field and you see all the security guards trying to run after him <laughs> and tackle him and get him because, you know, yeah. he's a streaker on the field. It looked like Douglas <laughs> was a streaker on the field trying to get away from them all. Oh, and he was goodness. just able to find that space get a couple 10 yards distance from him and then <laughs> toss that pass for a first down. Oh, let me see if I can kind of redraw that play. It was a punt situation. He got the snap. He was being rushed. I thought he probably could have gotten, gotten it off, but he quickly... He ran all the way back to his five-yard yeah, line. Yeah, he ran he to the left first, and then he reversed his field. He was all the way back inside his 10. He got away. He looked like he was going to be tackled at the 10, which would have been a disaster. Uh, he got out of that situation, and he looked like he was going to run, and he decided to throw... And I, the only thing, illegal. Now the it, officials have no idea what they're calling well, they, here. <laughs> it has to be illegal man downfield because all the guys would have had, would have run it's off the line time. of scrimmage. Yeah. yeah so. Too much time. But I mean, <laughs> it's kind of a clever p play to pass it to him, and it looked like he was going to get the. Well, he had the first down. Yeah. But uh, I think you have to call. Well, they, <laughs> they're at the they're huddling up the referees here. Well, this is a big call. The officials, and uh, it is a big call. Because if not, if, if you call it like you're saying, the... Um, it could be a first down for Hightower, but I think you would have... Yeah. Uh, it's more than likely going to be a first down for Manville in Kevin, Hightower territory. I think if it's first down Hightower, Coach Kevin Hall for the Mavericks is going to lose it. <laughs> is that him standing right there? Yeah, I believe, <laughs> I believe that's him, and he's uh, anxious to hear the call here. Let's see. Let me see what they got here. Walking number four on the offense. What in the world? Repeat fourth down. Was maybe? it an illegal block? I think they called it an illegal block. Yeah, they called it block in the back on, on Hightower, who wow. was the punting team. So then wouldn't <laughs> that be a 10-yard penalty repunt? Well, you'd have to repunt it, yes. Yeah. Um, <laughs> I, uh, <yay. laughs> well, I think we've seen it all here tonight, Kyle. It, this, we have seen some strange plays. Mm. I mean, I thought Douglas was a goner back yeah. there in his 10, and he was just able to evade I don't, those three I don't you know, know how he. Yeah, I don't know how he got out of the grasp of those Mavericks at the 10. As you hear the boos from the high tower. Well, I mean, uh, it's, you know, you can we can boo it, but uh, we, didn't, gonna change we it. didn't see the play in terms of the illegal block. The, re the referee evidently saw something. And <laughs> it's just uh, it ends up being a fourth and four. <laughs> so yeah, Douglas wow. is back there to kick again with a minute 12 to play here in the half. 14 to 14. Manville and Hightower. Here's the snap, a high snap. Douglas has it, left foot kick, line drive. Field it at the 30 by right, and he's tackled at the 32. Doesn't get many, many yards on that. And I'm trying to see the tackler. Is it number 11? 41. Quentin Pearson makes the tackle. Nice play by Pearson to keep right from getting any extra yards there. So let's stay here, Patrick. I think they're going to get this going up pretty quickly because we're almost to the half here. we got 58 seconds left in the half. The Mavericks still have, just like you said, all three timeouts here. You trying to push the end zone here? Well, it would be interesting to see what they're going to do. They're going to – I think they're going to try to do something. and. Their I mean, offense they got a, they got the a lot of field they got to get through, you know yep. what I mean? They, they've moved the ball pretty well, though, here in the first half. And the last drive, they had a pretty good drive, too. So here's Smith, left side, quick pass, 30, 35, 40, and out of bounds goes Weary. That's the first time I've, Weary, first time I've talked, called him tonight. He came back for a short pass, and he was able to get the first down, and that's the kind of play I think they like. If it works, then they keep the keep the momentum going. If it doesn't work, maybe they try something else. But 50 seconds to play here in the half. 12-yard pass play. And I think the Mavericks have all their timeouts, according to the scoreboard. They got out three left on the board. Smith looking deep. Now he pulls it back. Now he goes deep left side. Got a man open at the 28. Is he in bounds? I think he is. is what a catch. Again? Well, let's see. Look, looks like uh, Thompson made that catch. Unless it was, uh, it was number, four. number four again, you were right. It was Weary, but I saw Thompson come out of there, but he's lining up on the right side. So all of a sudden, Weary 
Two huge plays. He was all alone at the 28. And he just caught it, had his feet inbounds, and now they're definitely in business. Smith back to pass, looking to the right. Now being rushed. Penalty marker on the play. Could be a hold. And he throws it out of bounds. Incomplete. Hit the ground. Ref Thompson was trying to make the catch, but uh, it hit the ground. Now the penalty marker holding. That's on Mike... Uh, Micaia, Micaia Williams, big offensive lineman who's a sophomore, number 53, they called it on. So it's going to be first and 20 at the, uh, it looks like it's going to be their 38. 38-yard 38 line. I don't know how the kicker is, if they would go for a field goal if they got a little closer. Two receivers to the right, two to the left, first down and 20 for the Mavericks. Smith looks to the left. Weary has it. They ran this play earlier in the, in the, in the series, and he's still fighting, and he's going to get about 10 yards, and they might be calling a timeout quick, and they do. Let's see. They might have marked him out. He might have went out of bounds before that 10-yard pickup. Let's just see where they mark it. Timeout. 25 seconds to play here in the first half. Mavericks went up 7-0. Hightower tied it 7-7. Then Hightower went up 14-7, and now... The Mavericks answered that, and now the Mavericks have a chance to go into the halftime, possibly with the lead. 25 seconds to play. It's second 10. Yep, they just erased that holding penalty with that little pass um, over to Weary, who's been the leader of this drive. 12-yard yeah. gain, then a 28-yard gain, and then a holding call that puts you back first and 20, and then you get another 10 yards back, and now you're looking at second and 10 as, as Manville's moving the ball very well on Hightower's 28-yard line. Yeah, Weary has uh, come out of this. Uh, he's come out of the out of the gates here in this particular drive. We hadn't mentioned him all night, and all let of a sudden he's got three catches. Yeah, let me look at the play-by-play -play sheet real quick, but I don't see a number four on here at all. Uh -huh. Yeah, no, that was his first, first pass of the game. Yeah, so second down and 10 for the Mavericks as Smith brings him to the line. Caden Smith, the junior quarterback. Again, two receivers on either side. 26 seconds to play here in the half. Smith, plenty of time. Just waiting, waiting, waiting. Now running. 25, 20, and he's down to the 15. As he's able to get a good block down there by one of his receivers. Looked like uh, Menifee was able to shield one of the defenders and now we have a player down is that weary number i can't i shouldn't say for sure but i thought i saw number four well, so we're going to take that time out with them here on the field patrick yep so thank you for tuning in here vibe for ben we've got 16 seconds left in the second quarter don't go anywhere you work hard so you deserve the good things in life like getting an amazing deal on awesome internet that's why there's never been a better time to switch to Xfinity. Get the fast and reliable internet you deserve for $19.99 a month for 12 months with a one-year contract. And ask how to score 12 times the speed for the same internet price when you add Xfinity Mobile. Just imagine, faster downloads, more streaming, the possibilities are endless. Or learn how to get a $200 prepaid card when you get gig speed internet during the Xfinity Black Friday sales event. That means powering a house full of devices when everyone's home this holiday season. So what are you waiting for? Sign up now because you deserve awesome internet. Go to Xfinity.com, call 1-800-XFINITY, or visit a store today. Requires paperless billing and auto pay, and 12 6 -21. Restrictions apply. New connect internet 50 megabits per second customers only. Equipment, taxes, and fees extra, and subject to change. After term, regular rates apply. Reduce speeds after 20 gigabytes of mobile usage. Archer Volkswagen showroom is open, and our team's excited to help you. Visit our sales department Monday through Saturday from 9 a.m. to 9 p.m. Or bring your car in for service from 7 a.m. to 7 p.m. Monday through Friday and Saturdays from 9 a.m. to 2 p.m. We're closed on Sundays to rest and recharge with our families so we can serve you well through the week. We hope to see you soon. We're back here at Hall Stadium. This marathon first half is down to 16 seconds. It's been a long one here with penalties and unfortunately there have been a couple of injuries. Well, it's 14 to 14 and the Manville Mavericks have a first and 10 on the Hightower 15 yard line. 
Uh, Fred Weary the third was the player down just moments ago, but he did walk off on his own, and he's I see him over there standing in the huddle area. Well, that's good for Weary. Is you know he just gets started going into the game with three receptions, and then yeah. now he's on the on the bench. So hopefully he'll be all right. He looks like he's uh, going to be able to get back in at some point. <coughs> but at the time being here, the Mavericks are trying to cash in here, close proximity of the end zone here, 15 yards away. For them, though, they only have 16 seconds left, and now Hightower trying to stand tall to keep him out of the end zone. Here is Smith. Looks to the right corner. He's got a man open. It's going to be incomplete. The ball got there just a little bit late, and uh, look, one of the defenders was able to knock it out of there or knock the player out of there. That was number five, Isaiah King, trying to catch the ball, but it was a little bit late getting little, there. A little bit overthrown as well as yeah. as as King was getting close to that back corner sideline, and he had to jump pretty high high ways yeah, to just was, go ahead and put his hands on it. Yeah, it was a tough play, and uh, second down and 10 from the 15. Smith looking to the right, got a lot of time, rolls to his right. Now he's rolling, scrambling, and he's going to be tackled out of bounds at about Big the 20. Loss. The clock continues to run. Are they going to – Is a, well, let's see. Let's see. They, did they call timeout? I believe they might have called timeout. The clock got to zero as Smith took his time. And now there's a little bit of discussion. This, this half cannot end conventionally, can it? Absolutely not. <laughs> now we got the and this game isn't going to end <laughs> conventionally either. We got a little huddle, and let's, what do we got here? The referee is going to tell us. Please reset the clock. One more play. <laughs> one more play. He's, <laughs> like, he's like, at least give him one more play. We don't want any seconds, <laughs> but just put one one play on the clock, please. Oh Thank boy. you. Oh, boy. It did, it did look like he went out, went out of bounds with yeah. time on the clock. So no, he did. I don't think that's a, it's a big controversy, but it was just kind of funny the way he said it. Yeah. We got a 38-yard field goal attempt. On ten, Antonio Rodriguez is going to attempt it and – Honor is going to be the holder for the lead. Manuel high snap brings it down. It's blocked. Oh! They could scoop it if they if they can scoop it, but it's going to be recovered by Manville, I think. It's still on the ground, and it's finally the whistle blows as one of the helmets comes flying out of there. A big block and a little momentum for Hightower going into halftime. It's been an eventful first half here from Hall Stadium. It really yeah. has, Patrick, and I mean, it <laughs> ends. It's good to end fittingly on a blocked field goal attempt. You gotta love that. So, well, we've hit halftime, and it's uh, a great game so far between these two teams, uh, rivals of the district. And you wouldn't expect anything less than a close game. And this halftime score: the Hurricanes 14, the Mavericks 14, and we'll take a break. Yep. Enjoy this interview. Um, that Roger put on for us with him and Bryce Kennard. We're going to play it right after a couple of uh, sponsor commercials. Hey, high schoolers. Are you interested in a career in sports media? Vibe can help. Launched in 2017, our Vibe U Ambassador Program is a one-of-a-kind educational scholarship program that offers high school students a chance to gain hands-on experience in the sports media field. Vipe U also gives students a platform to build their portfolio of creative work under the guidance of Vipe's seasoned professionals. From covering games to publishing photos, writing articles, and conducting on-camera interviews, each Vipe U ambassador receives an immersive experience geared toward their interests while promoting their own school and preparing them for their future. Email info at vipemedia.com to find out more about Vipe U today. You work hard, so you deserve the good things in life like getting an amazing deal on awesome internet. That's why there's never been a better time to switch to Xfinity. Get the fast and reliable internet you deserve for $19.99 a month for 12 months with a one-year contract. And ask how to score 12 times the speed for the same internet price when you add Xfinity Mobile. Just imagine, faster downloads, more streaming, the possibilities are endless. Or learn how to get a $200 prepaid card when you get gig speed internet during the Xfinity Black Friday sales event. That means powering a house full of devices when everyone's home this holiday season. So what are you waiting for? Sign up now because you deserve awesome internet. Go to Xfinity.com, call 1-800-XFINITY, or visit a store today. Requires paperless billing and auto pay and 12 6 -21. Restrictions apply. New connect internet 50 megabits per second customers only. Equipment, taxes, and fees extra and subject to change. After term, regular rates apply. Reduce speeds after 20 gigabytes of mobile usage.
you are the master of the multitask, the champion of making it happen. Taking care of business is not for the faint of heart. Still, you take care of it. Taking care of business. But who takes care of you? Office Depot Office Max. We supply you, copy you, and tune you up. Members get 2% back in rewards on everything, and we mean everything. We take care of you, so you can take care of business. Office Depot Office Max. Taking care of business. Welcome back to Hall Stadium. Kyle Harris here. Um, we're going to actually let y'all hear some of the band, and then I will get to that Bryce Kennard interview in a little bit. Enjoy some of the natural sounds over here at Hall Stadium during this halftime, and enjoy the bands. Social committee members are President Event Chair Lali Rodriguez, Vice President and Chaplain Krista Gutierrez, Recognition Chair Alessandra King, Two, Sisterly Relations Chair Brooks Coward. Public Relations Chair, Mackenzie Trice. Tonight, the Majestics would like to send a shout out to the director's husband, Happy Birthday. And they're performing their feature routine to the Billy English of Two Bad Guys. Take it away, Majestics.
known as the High Tower High School Marching Hurricane Band, under the field direction of drum majors Anneli Adams and Kendall Jones. High Tower High School Band is proud to present our 2021 Spirit Show, featuring a few tunes you may know. A little bit of torture, talking out of the side of your neck. Hope y'all enjoyed that Manville band. We're now going to cut to the Bryce Kennard interview. It's going to be two parts. Here's going to be part one. Hope y'all enjoy. Welcome back to Halftime on VibeFortBend.com, your broadcast home for Fort Bend County High School sports. And it's a great opportunity here to talk to Bryce Kennard. He's with Comcast, the external affairs manager and they have a great product that is so important to families these days called Internet Essentials. First of all, welcome in Bryce. Thank you so much. It's good to, to be here. Well, you know, the world has changed so much in about a year and a half, and even though so many things are getting back to normal, and that includes school, you know, most every district is doing in-person school now in the state of Texas, but it is still critical for families to have good Internet service it's all about school assignments, work things that the adults in the home do. What does Internet Essentials make it possible for some people, you know, who might not have thought they could afford good Wi-Fi and Internet? That's such a good question. So Comcast has been working in the digital equity space for more than 10 years. The Internet Essentials program is part of our wraparound strategy to support students and households who maybe have not had Internet for the first time at all. And so if, if you're looking to get a, an affordable option, the Internet Central is your best option. I will give you a couple of chances, in fact, probably several chances to, to say this, but sure. is there a particular website or phone number that people should call when they hear you talking about Internet Essentials and they hear how great it is? Where should they go if they are interested? Okay, so the Internet Central's program has three pillars. There's the, the force, of course, the, the broadband connection. You've got access to purchase a laptop for a great price, oh. and you have access to free digital literacy training classes. And all anyone has to do to get connected is visit internetessentials.com. That's easy to remember, internetessentials.com. So let's talk about some anecdotal type things where it might have happened to you, it's probably happened to someone you know where maybe they just went through incredible stress because they weren't able to, I don't know, turn something in at the right time or they weren't able to get the proper quality of something. Uh, is there some kind of anecdotal thing you can describe where Internet Essentials could certainly come to the rescue and prevent that type of situation? Absolutely. Right now with the pandemic hopefully closing and coming to an end, but um, right now a, a lot of families are struggling to have a reliable um, internet connection and not just the student but really the parents and anyone that's in the household. So if you've got um, bills to, to take care of, if you've got medical um, access, records you're trying to access and upload, having a strong in-home connection is so valuable right now and it's very important. All right, we're talking with Bryce Kennard. He's with Comcast, the external affairs manager, and he knows all about Internet essentials. And sometimes that having the right kind of Wi-Fi service and the right kind of connectivity in your home can be a cost situation. Well, until now. In fact, this is a great product. It's not brand new because um, Comcast introduced it uh, how long ago? About 10 years ago. We introduced the Internet Essentials program really has a way to close the digital divide. We have been working with a number of school districts, a number of nonprofit organizations to make sure that there are no challenges when people are trying to get connected to the, inter to the Internet at home. Well, uh, you probably didn't know that I was going to do this, but I just want to ask you a couple of questions. So you are a Houston guy, which is something we love, Greater Houston. We're all very proud of it. And you went to Aldine Eisenhower. So what do you remember? I don't know whether you took part in athletics or were just a fan rooting for the teams that represented your school. What are a couple of memories for you? First of all, I loved being a high school student in Houston. There's such a fantastic culture and shared kind of um, experience that we all love. I remember, of course, the football game, right? I remember the cheerleaders. I remember the football players. And I just remember, most importantly, the energy and all the excitement that I had from rooting for my hometown team, especially my, you know, I went to Eisenhower, but I rooted for all kind of Houston football teams. So that's still the same case today. Did you pull any pranks on anybody from a rival school? 
I would like to say that I did in my head I did, but no no physical pranks. <laughs> well I can I can tell you about something that didn't have anything to do with Aldine Eisenhower, but I went to McCullough, which became the Woodlands. Do you ever you've heard of McCullough I'm, when it was McCullough? Yes I have. Oh, then you're older than you look, I guess. <laughs> so we were playing Klein on their homecoming game. We were in our first year as varsity. And at the time, this is how long ago it was, Klein was the only school in Klein ISD. Klein Oak hadn't even been, bit, uh, been built. And uh, Jim Parsons, who's an alum of Klein Oak, yeah, I, he must have been, I don't know, four or something know, at the time. You do? Yeah, I know of Jim, of course, but yeah, I do. I, I know you that you know him personally? I know that name and I know the personality. Oh, okay. You know how some people are just infamous? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I know. I got I got kind of excited there because I thought you could maybe help me get a halftime interview with Jim Parsons, the Big Bang <laughs> Theory guy. Okay, but but uh, never mind. Uh, unless you do meet him, uh, please give him my card. Anyway, <laughs> if I do, you know I've got you covered, buddy. Okay, we've kind of gone down a rabbit hole, but that's okay. We're visiting with Bryce Kennard of Comcast, and he is the expert on internet essentials. But the prank was. Some drafting students, guys who wanted to be architects, none of whom were football players, broke into Klein Memorial Stadium, which at the time had a grass field. Well, they put on the field the most perfect Super Bowl quality logo because we were McCullough. Big M, then in the middle, a very small C, and then a very large block C on the right. And they made a logo on the field that went from 40 yard line to 40 yard line and hash mark to hash mark. It was perfect. And when dawn broke on that Friday morning when we were to play Klein that Friday night, uh-oh, they discovered there was a problem in the middle of the field, but they couldn't get rid of it. They couldn't hose it down. It would have become a swamp there at the 50 yard line in the middle of the field. So. We played Klein with our logo in the middle of their field, and they were pretty PO'd. I have to tell you, we lost 50 to 6. <laughs> that's one for the history books. Oh, that's fantastic. It's always um, nice to kind of um, experience and also kind of get to do some pranks, as long as they're fun. Okay, but you don't have one to top the one that I told about? No, I don't. That's, that's a pretty good one, actually. Well, thank you. But, and I'm, <laughs> I'm kind of glad you don't uh, have one to top it because... Uh, this is, we're kind of running out of time. We're about to start the third quarter. So, Bryce Kennard, thank you so much for being with us. And we want people to know that Internet Essentials is a great option for them. It's not going to cost a lot because if, if people are at an economic disadvantage, that will certainly qualify them. And Comcast, being a great corporate citizen, is going to help them out. And one more time, give all the contact information, which doesn't take very long. It's really easy. For more information, visit internetessentials.com. All right. Thanks very much for being with us, Bryce. We appreciate it very much. And thank you so much for everything that Comcast does. They are our flagship sponsor. We, were able, we are able to bring more than 100 broadcasted games to the people in Fort Bend County thanks to your great support. And we know that you're reaching a lot of customers. So it's, it uh, benefits us, but we know it benefits you. Oh, thank you for that. We're happy to support. All right, we'll be back and start the third quarter here on VibeFortBend.com. Thank you again, Bryce Kennard. Don't go anywhere. We'll be back. All right, we're back, but only for a couple of minutes. The thing is, we're a little surprised. The halftime proceedings continue here on VibeFortBend.com. And so, uh, as fate would have it, there's one other thing that Bryce Kennard of Comcast needs to tell us about Internet Essentials. We are so excited to announce that we have been awarded a, um, an opportunity to, to partner with the Texas Education Agency. They're trying to get every um, student in Texas connected to broadband. And so um, you could get free Internet at home from the state, but we'd love to share with your audience that um, they can visit TEAConnectTexas.com to learn more to make sure that they can um, find out all they need to know to get affordable Internet at their home. So that is... TEAConnectTexas.org. Am I right? I'm sorry I said it wrong. I shouldn't have even said it. Let you say it one more time. You're the pro. TEAConnectTexas.com. All right. So now we know that we'll be back with the third quarter in just a moment. Thank you very much, Bryce Kennard. Thank you, Comcast. And thank you for listening to your broadcast home for Fort Bend County Sports. We'll be right back.
really this time. We'll be right back. You work hard, so you deserve the good things in life, like getting an amazing deal on awesome internet. That's why there's never been a better time to switch to Xfinity. Get the fast and reliable internet you deserve for $19.99 a month for 12 months with a one-year contract. And ask how to score 12 times the speed for the same internet price when you add Xfinity Mobile. Just imagine, faster downloads, more streaming, the possibilities are endless. Or learn how to get a $200 prepaid card when you get gig speed internet during the Xfinity Black Friday sales event. That means powering a house full of devices when everyone's home this holiday season. So what are you waiting for? Sign up now because you deserve awesome internet. Go to Xfinity.com, call 1-800-XFINITY, or visit a store today. Requires paperless billing and auto pay, and 12 6 Restrictions apply. New Connect Internet 50 megabits per second customers only. Equipment, taxes, and fees extra, and subject to change. After term, regular rates apply. Reduce speeds after 20 gigabytes of mobile usage. Hey, high schoolers. Are you interested in a career in sports media? Vibe can help. Launched in 2017, our Vipe U Ambassador Program is a one-of-a-kind educational scholarship program that offers high school students a chance to gain hands-on experience in the sports media field. Vipe U also gives students a platform to build their portfolio of creative work under the guidance of Vipe's seasoned professionals. From covering games to publishing photos, writing articles, and conducting on-camera interviews, each Vipe U ambassador receives an immersive experience geared toward their interests while promoting their own school and preparing them for their future. Email info at vipemedia.com to find out more about Vipe U today. You are the master of the multitask, the champion of making it happen. Taking care of business is not for the faint of heart. Still, you take care of it. Taking care of business. But who takes care of you? Office Depot Office Max. We supply you copy and tune you up members get two percent back in rewards on everything and we mean everything we take care of you so you can take care of business office depot office max taking care of business hello fans this is bradley stavanaugh with neville insurance we know fort bend county i'm a fourth generation resident of fort bend i'm your local hometown trusted agent with over 30 carriers and nine auto insurance carriers we shop the insurance for you we know insurance is hard. We know it's complicated. We make it easy for you. We have Spanish speakers here available for you. Call us at 979-793-7411 or needvilleinsurance.com. Once again, call us 979-793-7411. You are the master of the multitask, the champion of making it happen. Taking care of business is not for the faint of heart. Still, you take care of it. Taking care of business. But who takes care of you? Office Depot Office Max. We supply you, copy, and tune you up. Members get 2% back in rewards on everything. And we mean everything. We take care of you so you can take care of business. Office Depot Office Max. Taking care of business. What is Vipe Live? Vipe Live is one of the largest and most respected broadcast and live stream networks in the state of Texas. Vipe Live broadcasts any sport you can think of for youngsters of any age, from Pee Wee and Pop Warner to high school, club, college, semi-pro, and beyond. We also broadcast plenty of academic, fine arts, and community-related events as well, and now as partners with Flow Sports. Email us at info at vipemedia.com to find out more. Vipe Live, we bring your teams to you. Back here at Hall Stadium, this is Patrick Kinnick along with Kyle Harris. And Kyle, you've got some some numbers you'd like to share with us. I do, Patrick. I've been crunching these numbers. First, I'm going to give you Manville. Um, the rusher, leading rushers number 12, going to be Caden Smith for seven rushes for 71 yards and two touchdowns. And uh, excuse me, that's not even the leading rusher. That's also their quarterback who's thrown 11 for 17 for 124 yards. Uh, no touchdowns through the air, but 11 for 17 with 124 yards and two touchdowns on the ground. He would be my MVP so far for this game, uh, both between Manville and Hightower. But let's get back to Hightower and where their touchdowns came from. One of them came from their quarterback, Penson, Kedron, Kendron Penson Jr. He was six for eight with 44 yards in the air and a touchdown. 
as well as Jeremy Payne, our MVP of the last Hightower game, had eight carries for 120, 112 yards and one touchdown, and most of that came from that 92-yarder we saw earlier, Patrick, and those are all the stats I have for you from the first half. Well, that's uh, a lot of stuff there. The, one of the things that you, you did find out, I think you found out how many penalties there were in that first yes. half. Yes. Oh, thank <coughs> you for reminding me, Patrick. I, that was at the top of my sheet. Completely yeah. forgot about it. That so was a yeah. big part of the first half. Oh, it was. It was. The penalties were absolutely insane. And luckily for us, the uh, the TV guys next to us hooked us up with this stat. 20 combined penalties in that first half, at least all the ones that were accepted, for a total of 181 yards out of total penalties and that's that's why we're here at 920 and you know only getting in the third quarter with all those penalties and all those injuries we saw yeah so. yeah fans tonight's playoff game between the hurricanes and the mavericks is being broadcasted live on vipe fortbend.com your home for fort bend county sports pop in your earbuds and listen to it right here in the stadium plus you can listen to it later on the podcast app absolutely free vipe Broadcasts are being brought to you by Xfinity, Arch, Archer Volkswagen, First Tire and Automotive, and the Needville Insurance Agency. Also by Office Depot on Williams Trace in Sugarland. Fortbend.com is your broadcast home for Fort Bend County Sports. And Patrick, I would like to add one more thing. So before that half ended, we were kind of wondering if Hightower was going to go for that fourth and one. They elected to punt, and then pretty much the time ran out and the score ended. I bet you another reason why they elected to punt there is because they get the ball to start out this third quarter because right. they won the toss and they deferred to the second half, giving Manville the first drive of the game. And now Hightower is going to receive it here to start the third quarter. And that is a very important point as the uh, re return men get positioned for Hightower. It looks like it's going to be the deepest man is going to be um, uh, Mendez, flanked by Davis and Payne. You've heard of that guy before, Jeremy Payne. Man, it took him a while to get going there, but, you know, that 92-yard touchdown, it really makes your stats look better. If he didn't have that 92-yard touchdown, He'd be looking at seven for ten yards. That's yeah, amazing, all isn't it? Had. Yep. Yeah, it is pretty amazing. Got a report from uh, the Ridge Point game. They trail 17-14 with eight and a half to play in the fourth quarter. So come on, alma mater, make me proud. Point make Panthers me proud. Trying to come back at the end. Here's a short kick. Fielded at 25, but it's muffed, and it's oh. going to be recovered by Mandel. It. Had it, but then I don't know if they were able to maintain it. One of the Manville players got on it and rolled over the ball. And I don't know if he, if one of the other guys was able to get on it, but there's a pile up there, and who's got it? Nobody's pointing yet. Usually you get both teams pointing both ways. Now the Mavericks have wow. it. Mavericks have it. The big break of the second half wow. starts on the first play of the second half. <coughs> and looked like um, Mendez excuse me, Caleb Davis was unable to field that ball and went through his arms. He muffed it, and one of the Mavericks was getting on it at the 18-yard wow. line, so with 11.54 to play here in the third quarter, just underway, Mavericks man, in business. Man, when stuff happens like that, man, it really kills the momentum of your team, man, because you were really looking forward to that first drive this yep. half, and now you got Manville in the red zone. Here's Smith, handoff. Looks like Smith, uh, that's Ty Harris. Harris up the middle for a touchdown. I don't know if anybody touched him. He was up the middle and wide open all the way to the end zone. You talk about momentum and how this second half started. Hightower coming out of the locker room thinking, we got the ball, we're going to march it down the field. Next thing you know it, Mavericks have seven on the board. Yeah, Harris just ran an 18-yard touchdown. That's more combined total yards than he had in the entire first half. Only 17 yards in the first half for Harris on seven carries. That's uh, unbelievable. Here's a snap. Kick is up. It is good by Rodriguez. So just like that, 11 seconds played here in the quarter. And the Mavericks lead 21 to 14. And we're going to keep it right here. Wow. Yeah, interesting start of the third quarter there, Patrick. I mean, you get you get a muffed uh, 
return there by Hightower, and Manville luckily bounces on it on Hightower's 18-yard line, and it only takes them one play, and they're able to bring it all the way down in the end zone on one 18-yard row, one 18-yard, one 18-yard run by uh, by Ty Harris. Yep. So. They took advantage of it on one play. Yep. Well, now it puts Hightower back 21 to 14 with only uh, 11 seconds off this play clock. Patrick, that all it, that was all it took for Manville to get a get a touchdown here, and yep. All of a sudden, the uh, the Hurricanes are playing from behind again. They were behind early, went ahead by by seven, and it was tied then at half, and now they're behind by seven again. Here's a long kick this time. Somebody's going to get it at the five, and he's not going to go very far as it looks like he's going to get stopped at about the 17. Doesn't even get to the 15-yard line. Oh, yeah, not even the 15. That Excuse looks like me. Uh, yeah. Davis was – was that Davis? I'm trying to get the number down there. Uh, I can't get the number for sure. Who got that ball? Looks like number 18, Mendez, was the receiver of that kick. Hey, Patrick, real quick, check this out to my left. Uh, the, the TV guy's got the Rich Point game up over here, oh, so I'm able, to, I'm able to keep up with it a little bit. 17-14, uh, uh, just like you said, a Tuscasita in the fourth quarter. Who has the ball? Can you see? Uh, yeah, looks like Ridge Point has the ball right now. Looks like they're marching. Here's the yep. Penson with the snap. Across the middle he goes. He had his man, Douglas, and just as he... Attempted the catch. Neal was in there making the contact to knock the ball away. Good job by Neal to dissuade Douglas from getting the catch there. So it'll be second down and 10 for the Hightower Hurricanes. They trail by seven, 11 and a half to play third quarter. In a marathon game here, the Ridge Point game is going to get over probably in another five minutes. And we're still playing most of the second half. Excuse me, a Tuscasita has the ball, and they're they're running it right now almost all the way down into the Ridge Point's 20. Here's a handoff. Payne, he's got the 20, 30. He's going to go all the way again. He's to the 40. Oh, and he's tripped up at the 32-yard line. Oh, my goodness, he shot through there quickly. Nobody touched him until the shoestring tackle at the 31-yard line. What a run. And you got to give credit to the offensive line for – Really creating a huge hole for Payne that time. He almost tied it up with another long run. But he was tripped up at the 31-yard line. So that was uh, trying to add that up. 56. 56-yard run. And so he has a 92-yarder and a 56-yarder. He's on his way to 200 yards here. Here's a, here's a fake to to Payne oh. this time. Penson running around there looking for somewhere to go, and he's able to pick up two yards on a scramble. Didn't have a whole lot of time to look for a pass, and he just got to scrambling early. Hey, just the fact that he gained a yard on that play is is pretty impressive due to the fact that he was almost sacked five yards behind the line of scrimmage, so way to, get away, way to get away from them. He had quick feet going there, and uh, it's a good thing he had quick feet. Second down and nine yards to go. Yeah, and a Tuscasita is, uh, is pushing uh, end zone right now. Pushing the red zone on on Rich Point. So uh, Tuscasita and that's is a touchdown. Tuscasita. Yep, they just scored. So doesn't look good for the Panthers. Here's a oh. pass caught Ooh. by Douglas. He's got it to 16. Five touchdown. Unbelievable. He just outreached the defender. Justin Medlock, number six for the Mavericks, just went up and tried to intercept that. But Douglas, with a little more height on him, just went right over his head, snagged the ball over him, and then ran right into the end zone he with that. Got the, he just wow. got the rebound, basically, over the defender, snared it out of the air, and was able to ran, run the rest of the way to the end zone. What a catch by Douglas, this big 6'4 receiver. Penson put it up there for him, and he was able to get it out of there. And we have a tie score if this extra point is good. Ventura ready to kick. Here it is. It's up, and it's good. Well, we played two minutes here and a half, and both teams have scored. The score now, 21-21, to 21, Mavericks and Hurricanes. We'll take a short break. You work hard, so you deserve the good things in life. 
like getting an amazing deal on awesome internet. That's why there's never been a better time to switch to Xfinity. Get the fast and reliable internet you deserve for $19.99 a month for 12 months with a one-year contract. And ask how to score 12 times the speed for the same internet price when you add Xfinity Mobile. Just imagine, faster downloads, more streaming, the possibilities are endless. Plus, you'll save hundreds over AT&T. Or learn how to get a $200 prepaid card when you get gig speed internet during the Xfinity Black Friday sales event. That means powering a house full of devices when everyone's home this holiday season. So what are you waiting for? Sign up now because you deserve awesome internet. Go to Xfinity.com, call 1-800-XFINITY, or visit a store today. Requires paperless billing and auto pay and it's 12 621 Restrictions apply. New connect internet, 50 megabits per second customers only. Equipment, taxes, and fees extra and subject to change. After term, regular rates apply. Compares monthly service charge for Xfinity, 600 megabits per second to at t 500 megabits per second, each with one unlimited mobile line for a year as of 10 621 Reduce speeds up to 20 gigabytes of mobile usage. We're back here at Hall Stadium. Patrick Kinnick along with Kyle Harris. And this is quite a game here, 21 all. And Guzman is going to kick it off for the Hurricanes. Deep is McLean at the 2, the, to the 15, 20, 25, and he's going to get to about the 26-yard line as he ran up the left side. So the Hurricanes were able to uh, answer the Maverick score, and it's 21 all now. It's, this is a... What a game! Both teams going at it each other, at each other here, back and forth we go. No, I mean this is exciting, Patrick, and, and the fact that Hightower came out and muffed a muffed a punt or muffed the kickoff to start off the third quarter, and Manville was able to score quickly. Just the fact that they came back right down and you know had a 56-yard run there by Payne, and then Penton was able to connect with Douglas on that 30-yard touchdown, and you know it's it's right back to a tie ball game. Yeah, it's it's great resilience by the Hurricanes. They didn't. He didn't uh, get two down there after that tough start to the third quarter. Smith looks left, and he is errant on his throw. Out of bounds, incomplete. It'll be second down and ten. He's trying to get Will He was trying to hit uh, Kelby Williams, and he shot it a little bit out of his reach. Now the whistle blows, and what do we got here? What's, we can't have a game here without uh, <laughs> some kind of stoppages of play here. Now they got to reset the clock or something. Yeah, it's a clock function. And of course the referee's mic does not work 100%. It's kind of going in and out and now he's walking to the sideline. What in the world? <laughs> it's just been almost uh, comical out here with all the stoppages here. It, Kyle had mentioned at halftime there were 20 penalties in the first half, which is, boy, I don't know what the record is. That That's just unheard of how many penalties there were. And uh, now we have another stoppage, and I guess they had to reset the clock to 9.56. There we go. Come on now. <laughs> Some clock malfunctions here. They're looking up at the press box like it's our fault. Second, we ain't got nothing to do with it. Trust me. Second down and 10. Braden Smith. Waits for the snap. Or is it Caden Smith? I'm Ooh. sorry. Quick pass caught. Then he's dropped right away for a two-yard loss. Close to being an interception almost, to be honest with you. Williams made the catch, but he was wrapped up right away, and they're going to call it a, well, let's see. Where are they marking it? Looks like a two-yard loss. Second, third down and 12 now. Great defensive play by the Hurricanes, and they're poised to get the ball back here if they can stop them here. Caden Smith. Quarterback for the Mavericks waits for the snap. He's got it. He's got time. Going deep. He's got a man open, but he's going to overshoot him. That's uh, Isaiah King, who was broke deep that time. And uh, unfortunately for the Mavericks, the pass was overthrown by about two, three yards. Good job of the Hurricanes to stop him. And they're going to get the ball back with pretty good field position, unless the kick is. A great kick here. Absolutely, yeah. Big stop there by Hightower as, as they were able to stop Manville back on their 24. It's going to be a fourth down. They're going to punt away. And, yeah, great field position for, for Hightower now and hoping to make up for that uh, muffed fumble earlier. Here, here's the kick. It's a really good kick mm -hmm. all the way inside the 30. And as I said, unless they get a good kick, and they sure did, all the way down to the 22 yard line as Caleb wow. Johnson did a pretty good job of staying away 
maybe he would have rather caught that as a fair catch. But it's uh, first down and 10 for the Hightower Hurricanes from their own 21-yard line. Xfinity is a proud sponsor of Fort Bend County and Houston area sports on Vipe. FortBend.com with the Xfinity Sports Zone app. Watch multiple games at once and track live stats and scores while watching another game. It's the best sports entertainment experience with Xfinity X1. And here come the Hurricanes. Tie score, nine minutes to play third quarter. Penson has the snap. Looking downfield, has time. He hits Johnson, 30-yard line, 35, 40, where he's knocked out of bounds at about the 42. Nice job by Kayla Johnson, a little down and out pass. The defender whiffed at the tackle and he was able to pick up about 10 more yards on a good run after the catch. Nice little 20-yard completion there for good, Penson. Good pass from Penson, he hit him right where he needed to hit him. And he's got the play now and he's getting his teammates up to the line again. He's got Payne with him in the backfield. Johnson with a touchdown already in this game. He got uh, two receivers, three receivers to the right. Payne in the backfield with him. Back to pass is Penson looking deep. Now he's scrambling to the left side. 45, 46, maybe the 48 yard line. It's going to be a good pickup of about six yards. So uh, scrambling was Penson and a good run. And it'll be second down and four. Hightower moving the ball well here. You know, you, Penson making a great decision. You know, doesn't see a man open downfield, doesn't panic. He scrambles out of the box, runs to the outside, and gets six yards for it. Great great awareness there by Penson Jr. The uh, Ridge Point Panthers are in trouble here. Uh, they trail 24 to 14 with a minute 45 to play at a ball game. They do have the ball, but... Uh, not looking good. Not a lot of time left. For the Panthers. Here's yeah. Payne up the middle, and he has some Payne put on him Jeremy that Payne time by uh, J.P. Dieter. Just lost three yards on that. Wow. He, among others, were on his back in a hurry, and he lost. Looks like he lost three yards on the play. Third down and six for the Hurricanes. And the crowd making some noise now, both sides. Of course, the Hightower fans are urging their team and the Manville fans trying to get a stop here. Man, what a packed house out yeah, here at Hightower. Look at that student section, yeah, man. You can't find a seat. It's amazing. Yeah, it's a playoff football. It brings out the best. And now there's a timeout, uh, I believe. Yep, Hightower. Timeout. They looked a little disheveled mm -hmm. on the uh, they did. play there. Let's take a short break Hi, here. It's 21 all from Hall Stadium here. With Internet Essentials from Comcast for only $9.95 a month, you get more. High-speed home internet service included. Peace of mind with XFi Advanced Security included. Access to millions of XFi Wi-Fi hotspots. That's included too. Internet Essentials from Comcast brings you affordable, high-speed internet to your home for only $9.95 a month. When you're connected, you're ready for anything. Visit internetessentials.com for more information. Taxes extra. Restrictions apply. Archer Volkswagen showroom is open, and our team's excited to help you. Visit our sales department Monday through Saturday from 9 a.m. to 9 p.m. Or bring your car in for service from 7 a.m. to 7 p.m. Monday through Friday, and Saturdays from 9 a.m. to 2 p.m. We're closed on Sundays to rest and recharge with our families, so we can serve you well through the week. We hope to see you soon. Stadium, third down and six yards to go for the Hurricanes from their own 46. Payne goes in motion to the right. Penson has the snap, looks to the right. He balls tipped and then caught by Douglas, and he's going to get the first down and track down from behind. The ball was tipped. It was not thrown to Douglas. It was tipped, but Douglas was able to come down with the ball and get all the way down to the 35-yard line. A little bit of luck for the Hurricanes there, but a good job by uh, 
Douglas to be Johnny on the spot. Huge amount of luck there. Penson was not aimed for Douglas. It bounced off the intended receiver's hands, and Douglas was luckily just in the right place at the right time. Grabbed the ball mid in the air and then ran it for a good 20-yard gain there. Seven. Hightower on the 35. Yep, seven and a half minutes to play. Hightower on the march here in Maverick territory at their 35. Payne. Goes in motion, looked a little strange. Penson has it downfield, he goes deep. It's going to be incomplete. He went down to the left side for his receiver. And I'm trying to see if it's 15 or 16. Looks like Adams. The Jaden Adams on the, the intended receiver there. Fifth, yeah, at 16, there we go. It's Thank you, Kearney. PA. It's <laughs> Kearney. It's number 16. Um, I tell you, some of these numbers, you know, they get to scrunched up in their uniforms. And Anyway, it was uh, Kearney instead. So we anyway, the PA guy helping incomplete us in our ear. pass. We know that. <laughs> Here's Payne, right side, find some room. Still going, and then he's tackled quickly after his momentum got going a little bit, but he got two yards on the play. Looked like it was going to be for more, but the Mavericks closed quickly. Third and eight. Yeah, and it seems like this game at Payne hasn't gone for 50 or 60 or even 90 like he did earlier. He's He really hasn't been able to get many, you know, just five, six-yard gains on the ground yeah, you know, it's very much. It's been, it's been tough for him to get some. And fortunately for the Hurricanes, he's able to get those big runs. And we got that 92-yard touchdown. We got an update on the Ridge Point game. They just scored. I think there's probably less. I know there's less than two minutes left in the game, but they're about to kick it off down 21 to 24 against wow. the Tuscasita. Looks like they're going to be going for the onside kick because I know it was less than, probably less than a minute in that game. Penson waits for the snap. Now there's going to be a whistle. What else is new? Is there a timeout? Delay of game. My goodness, that is a real killer penalty. Third and eight becoming third and 13 on a delay of game. Well, it's not their first one. No, game, they've had so. some struggles here as the penalties just continue to mount. Let's see if they can overcome this one. They're going to be at their own, uh, excuse me, the, the Maverick 38. And it's going to take a pretty big play here to get this first down. It Maybe they could at least get it into a position where they can take it for fourth down. Penson in the shotgun formation. He fakes a pitch to the left. Now he runs to the right, and he's going to be tackled quickly. No going there for uh, Penson. Lost a yard on the play. It's going to be fourth and, uh, what'd you say, 14 yeah. on their own 39? Yeah, would you? 14. Looks like they're yeah, going to. Yeah, you got to punt it. They're going to punt it out of there and try to play field position. Fourth and 14 from the 39 yard line of the Mavericks, and they're opting for field position. Hopefully, they can get a good kickoff here as uh, K Colin Wright goes deep. Well, while, the Mavericks. while they're here about to punt, Patrick, let me give you an update on the Ridge Point game. They did not get the uh, onside kick. I guess that was their only hope. And now uh, a Tuscasita's in victory formation just kneeled the ball down. So here's, that's, that's going to be game. Here's Douglas's kick. It's a low liner. And off to the right, out of bounds somewhere. Around the 10. Inside the 15. They're going to mark it right at the 10. Yeah. So the Hightower Hurricanes do a good job of uh, battling for field position. They're going to make the Mavericks go 90 yards if they're going to get anything here. And uh, Let's see what happens if the Hurricanes can play some good, strong defense. And as you just said, it sounds like Atascacita is uh, downing yeah. the ball and running the clock out. Yep, it's over. The, uh, the players are lined. Um, you know, shaking hands, and, and that's going to be the game at Ridge Point. They're going to lose in, what is this, the third round, Patrick? Yeah, yes. Yep. Uh, they So they lose 21, 24. 21 to 24 yep. Yep, in and the third round of the playoffs. So uh, sorry to hear that about the Ridge Point game. Uh, great season for them, but yep. it ends with a loss in the playoffs here. Valiantly, though, 24-21. Here's a handoff. There's Harris. Ty it's Ty Harris. He rumbled up the middle for about 11 yards, and that was a pretty hard, pretty rough run for him. He uh, showed some power and strength through the hole that time. It's first down and 10 for the Mavericks at the 21-yard line. We're winding down here the third quarter. It's going to be a, quite a finish here, I think. Smith, back to pass. He's got a man open left side. He's got it at the... Oh, he had it! And then he dropped it. Wow. Oh, my goodness. And I'm trying to get the number here. Looks like McMenifee. 
Menifee had it on his hands. And he was about ready to go down that sideline. And then it almost looked like his knee came up and knocked the ball out of his own hand. But I don't know if his knee did that. But it appeared somewhat yeah, like that. It looked like he the ball was just a little bit out of his reach. And he tried to adjust. And, and it just, unfortunately for him, he couldn't hang on to the he ball sure there. Sure looked like he had a good chance for it. But it'll be second down and 10. Good thing for the Hurricanes. Here's a handoff. He's going to struggle for about one yard. I think it's Ty Smith again. And he had a little more rough, rough going that time than he did the last time he carried it. Looks like they're going to mark it for no gain. Third and ten for the Mavericks. It's turned into a little bit of a defensive struggle here after both teams scored early in the quarter. And now both teams have been uh, stiffening up on the defensive end. Third and ten, Mavericks. Smith waits for the snap. Got this formation, they run quite a bit. Two receivers on both sides. Smith looking downfield, he's being rushed, and he's gonna be sacked inside the 10. And it's gonna be a sack by Julian Payne. Julian Payne had an interception for uh, a he touchdown, did. didn't he last he did. week? last week, yep. He had a great game we were talking about too. both the Paynes yeah. going off in that game, yep. And so he makes the sack inside the 10, and it's gonna be great field position opportunity for the Hurricanes, and that punt now Looks uh, extra, extra good for the for the Hurricanes when they decided to kick it, and they pinned them down, and they still have them pinned down. Here's the kick from the Mavericks. A good yeah, kick. Wow. Wow. Johnson, Caleb Johnson, takes it at the 42, a fair catch, and that's good field position. I'm glad he caught it rather than letting it land on the ground. Absolutely. It might still be rolling. So the Hurricanes now with a score tied at 21. Will take over inside their own territory, but with good field position at the 42, 43 yard line. Right at the 43. With 3.33 to play here in the third quarter. Yeah. Both crowds are edging towards the edge of their seats more and more with each. Each game, each play being played here. I will say this, Patrick. At least this third quarter hasn't been, you know, dealt with too many penalties. Only had one delay a game in this third quarter, and yeah. that's that's it. So. Cer certainly not the way it was in the first half. Here's the hand off to Payne. Finds a little room. He's through this crease. 45, 40, and he slips Doubled. down yep. at the thir 35 yard line. Once he breaks the the line of scrimmage, he is just a bullet through there. And this time he lost his footing at the 35-yard line of the Mavericks, but a big, big pickup for the for the Hurricanes. Looks like about a 22-yard gain. Yep, 23-yard gain. There you go. Perfect. That's going to be their fourth converted first down in this in this second half. Now let's see if they can take advantage, full advantage of the field position. 35-yard line of the Mavericks. Penson under center. Two receivers to his left. He's back to pass. Looking left. Downfield he goes. He's got Douglas, but he overthrows him. He was uh, trying to hit Douglas down the left side, and he basically threw it out of bounds. It was not quite catchable for Douglas. And I like to play, though. Let's give him a little more opportunity to make some catches. He had a catch earlier for a touchdown in the third quarter where he just outleaped the defender. Grabbed it and ran in for a touchdown. It's 21-21, 2.50 to play, third quarter. Second and 10, Hurricanes on the 35-yard line of the Mavericks. Here comes Douglas in motion all the way across. Hand off to Payne. He's got room, 30, 25, making some rooms. What a move! Down to the 15, he fumble, fumble, and the Mavericks, I think, have it. Wow. Unless there's some fighting going on down there, I no, don't it's know. it's Mavericks ball. Oh, my goodness. Payne did a heck Wait. of a job getting a getting it down there. And what do they got here? They're gonna well one of the Mavericks has yep. come out of there with the ball. Unbelievable. Boy, Payne made a heck of a run and a couple of unbelievable moves to get inside the 15. And then the ball came loose around the 12 and came out of there rolling around. And the Mavericks were on it. What a big turn of events. Yeah, and, and I think Payne was just getting a little bit too, not I, won't, I don't want to say aggressive, but he tried to get greedy there, Patrick, and try and get those extra little yards. And unfortunately for him, the Mavericks 
caught him and knocked the ball right out of his hands. Well, guess what the referees are doing right now? Guess, Discussing guess, if they're, <laughs> it's going to be the Manville ball or not. That's exactly what they're doing. They're you see the Hightower side, all their arms are pointing like they want to keep the ball. And Hightower so seems to be saying that how can it be their ball? I saw Ma I saw the Maverick literally jump on it and get on the ball, so I don't, I don't I, understand well, how yeah, it can be. Yeah, and you never know what's going on underneath that pile, but the Maverick defender came out of there with the ball so it's hard yeah. to it's hard to say uh, but the but the hurricanes are arguing as if they should have the ball i don't understand why there's even a conversation here by the referees to well, be honest they with had you. a Leave long it, man, discussion ball, again you know and are we going to get some more commentary or not here i don't think so i, I think, think they're coming over yeah. to talk to the coaches over the of, of high tower to sort of clarify it and apparently the mavericks are going to have the ball but every Seems like every play is uh, some sort of an adventure to see who has it and what really happened. And boy, oh boy, what is going on out here? Now it looks like Hightower's Unbelievable. Here. Oh, my gosh. Now they're giving the ball back to Hightower. This is unbelievable. Hightower football. Wow. I, I do not understand this. And now I'm sure the Manville coaches are over there thinking, what is going on out here? So Now they got to go over and talk to them and tell them what's going on. Let me fix my play-by-play -play here. Gee, really, I mean, it's great for Hightower, but I don't know how yeah, they. I don't, I don't know, know how, how they, they got, got the ball. ball. Yeah, I just I have no idea. Oh my goodness! <laughs> Jeez, I'm sure that the and the Maverick fans are probably beside themselves. Yeah, <laughs> trying to figure this one out. Because, but like you said, be. Kyle, it, it's hard to believe that Manville did not get on that ball. They had at least one or two guys that were right there. 18-yard run for Payne. Here we go, Hightower, first and ten. Hand off, right back to Payne, to the 15 where he's wrapped up and tackled for a two-yard gain. Got it, gave it right back to him after he fumbled it. Not a bad idea. Second down and eight. Manville trying to stiffen up here to keep him out of the end zone. Of course, the Hightower Hurricanes trying to get the go-ahead score with plenty of momentum as we approach the fourth quarter. Second down at eight. Penson directs the line of scrimmage, directs the lineman. Now there's a motion penalty. Oh, my goodness gracious. Another motion penalty, and it's going to be second down and 13, I think. The ball came out of there late. The linemen were moving. And false start. False start. On the offense, five-yard penalty. Repeat the down. Uh, <laughs> It's, uh, you know, playoff nerves maybe, huh? That's part of the problem, I'm sure. I don't know. <laughs> Takes the ball back to the 20. Cold weather. <laughs> Remember that excuse last week? Well, gotcha. hey. hey <laughs> it's getting well. a little bit colder now. You know <laughs> there hadn't been as many turnovers tonight, but uh, here's Pence and under center. Hands it off to Payne. Finds a little bit of room, but only for about two. Yeah, and those Mavericks, like, defensive linemen, if they can get to Payne, I mean, they're taking him down very quickly. It's when he breaks those holes and those gaps and he can just run for at days. Well, I think it feels like. Yeah, know? that's got to be their, their instruction is get him early. Yeah. Get him early. If you can get him early, that's great. But a couple of those plays, the hole just has been there and he bursts through it so quickly. Third down and uh, looks like about 11 yards to go for the Hurricanes here from the 18-yard line of the Mavericks. I'm wondering if they have a field goal, if uh, Ventura would kick a field goal from here. 35-yarder if they don't get anything. We'll find out. Here's Payne to the right side of Penson. Douglas, Douglas coming in motion. He comes in a belly motion behind the line of scrimmage. He has the pass. 20. And he's still on his feet. Cuts back to the left. And he's going to be short of the first down by, it looks like, about five yards. Douglas came in motion and he came behind the line, behind the quarterback. So it was actually a lateral pass. Fourth and five, that brings out Ventura for the, for the, for the uh, field goal opportunity. Looks like it's going to be about a 30, well, 28-yarder. Manageable. Douglas is going to be the holder. This will give them the lead if he can convert here. Might be, well, the clock is running underneath 20 seconds to play here in the third quarter. Here's the snap. The kick by Ventura is up, and it is good. The Hurricanes have a three-point lead now, 24 to 21. 
We'll take a short break from Hall Stadium. Hurricanes 24, Mavericks 21. Hello, I'm Gary Horn with Horn Solutions. We agree with energy analysts that the energy market has stabilized. We anticipate significant merger and acquisition activity. Good resources are scarce. Horn Solutions is positioned to assist you in accounting, finance, IT, and supply chain. Our staff can assist you with outsourcing, or we can supply you with resources to join your staff. Visit hornsolutions.net for details. Gary Horn is a highly successful businessman who has made a huge impact in people's lives, and he loves what he does for a living. That's a big reason why Gary Horn and Horn Solutions support Get a Great Gig. Get a Great Gig is a free job search consultation service that will help you find a job you love, whether it's to make more money or get personal fulfillment in the career of your choice. Email them at getagreatgig at gmail.com or on Twitter at getgreatgigs. Back at Hall Stadium, Guzman is going to be kicking off for the Hurricanes. They've just taken the lead off of the uh, Ventura 28-yard field goal. Here's Guzman's kick deep, caught at the five-yard line. Running to the left is uh, Thompson, still on his feet to the 20, 25, and he's going to be ridden out of bounds around the 28-yard line. And the clock has hit zero for the third quarter. We've played three quarters here from Hall Stadium. And the score, Hightower 24, Manville 21. You work hard, so you deserve the good things in life, like getting an amazing deal on awesome internet. That's why there's never been a better time to switch to Xfinity. Get the fast and reliable internet you deserve for $19.99 a month for 12 months with a one-year contract. And ask how to score 12 times the speed for the same internet price when you add Xfinity Mobile. Just imagine, faster downloads, more streaming, the possibilities are endless. Or learn how to get a $200 prepaid card when you get gig speed internet during the Xfinity Black Friday sales event. That means powering a house full of devices when everyone's home this holiday season. So what are you waiting for? Sign up now because you deserve awesome internet. Go to Xfinity.com, call 1-800-XFINITY or visit a store today. Requires paperless billing and auto pay. Ends 12 6 -21. Restrictions apply. New connect internet 50 megabits per second customers only. Equipment, taxes, and fees extra and subject to change. After term, regular rates apply. Reduce speeds after 20 gigabytes of mobile usage. Back at Hall Stadium. It's the beginning of the fourth quarter. Manville has the ball at their own 28-yard line. The Hurricanes lead 24 to 21. Smith handoff to Harris and no yardage there maybe two maybe two yards on the play good job by the high tower interior lineman Jalen Ellis and Julian Payne combined for the tackle second down and two or excuse me second down and eight for the Mavericks from the 30 yard line we are poised for a great finish here, 24-21. Smith back to pass, goes deep. He's going to be incomplete on the pass yeah, as he was trying to hit Williams. Yeah, number 24 right there, Abraham Dotson, the sophomore defensive back, was able to get his hand in there and puts them now in a third and long. Good job by Dotson there. He had great position on Williams there. Not much of a chance for Williams to make that catch. 11-21 to play. It's third down and eight for the Mavericks. Got to do something here. It's Don't Caden. give the ball back. Right, Caden Smith now with three receivers to the right. Looking right. Now scrambling right. Nowhere to go. He's going to throw the ball out of bounds. Great job of defense by the Hurricanes. Absolutely. Absolutely. And that's going to be a fourth and long on, uh, on Manville's 30. And it uh, looks like that's going to be a punt opportunity. Going to give Hightower the ball back. Could be a huge momentum, uh, momentum drive here coming up for Hightower. Well, they'd like to, they'd like to um, couple what they did off the last drive. Put some more points on the board, preferably a touchdown. But a good job on a three and out for the Hurricanes there. Yeah, and now this is the second. Uh, well, the last time they they were close to a three and out, an 11-yard run by Harris, and then it was a and that was a three and out. So. Here's Honor's kick, 
It's a good one and a fair catch caught by Johnson. Good job by Johnson to uh, field that ball. Yeah, he kind of fell on it, made sure he, he caught it like a like with his whole body, you know what I mean? He kind of squatted down and used yeah. his whole body to make sure he received that. Didn't want any more muffed, uh, muffed kickoffs. We've seen enough of them so far yeah, in this he, game. He was uh, very cautious with it. And he wanted to make sure, which is a very good idea. Thir first down for the Hurricanes with a three-point lead on their own 28-yard line. Man, this is a big, big drive for they would love. They here. would love to get a nice, long, sustained drive here for a touchdown. Here's Penson back to pass. How about a quick one? Downfield he goes. It's going to be caught. And it's first down inside the 25-yard line. Caleb Johnson. Caleb Johnson found his way open down the middle. And what a pass by Penson, and they're going to mark it at the, right at the 25-yard line. What a play. Every time I say these long, sustained drives, and then they come out with these big plays. 47 yards on that pass there. Wow. And the sixth converted first down here now in the second half for Hightower to only one converted first down for Manville. So the Hightower Hurricanes with the three-point lead in Manville territory at the 25-yard line. Penson directs a little bit of traffic. He's got Douglas coming behind him again in motion. Goes a little Douglas. further. Here comes Payne. Fake handoff to Payne, and it's going to be a Ooh. tackle on Penson. He was dragged down. Kind of an odd tackle. Great job there by the tackler, number 42, Kenyon Armstrong, the junior defensive lineman, able to bring Penson down there for look like Maybe a little loss of one there for Penson, actually. Yeah, so. I think it's going to be a loss of one. And the last time we saw a play like that, it was a face mask. This time he had him by the shoulder pads. Second down and 11. They would love to get a touchdown here and not have to settle for three. Yeah, because if they settle for three here, you give Manville a chance to come down and no possibly doubt. tie it and, and take a, take a one-point lead on you for a touchdown. There. Penson has a handoff. To Payne, 20, 15, 10, where he's Whoa. ridden down hard, but he's got a first and first down right at the 11-yard line. Yeah, he just ran into a brick wall there Whoa. by number 15, Jalen O'Neal, another junior defensive back. And, that was a and you don't see Payne get stopped like that very much. He he <laughs> literally ran into a brick wall and yeah, he stopped at the 11. It sure looked like at that time a brick wall. He was he found a lot of daylight and then all of a sudden, bam. 15-yard run there for him. Good man. job of hanging on to the ball, too. It is. First and 10, Hightower. Nine minutes to play. Trying to pad the lead. They have a three-point lead right now. Crowd. Anxious. Here's the man in motion again. Pain. And Ooh. this time he's going to take a two-yard loss. Whoa. Good defense by Potts. Looks like number six, Justin Medlock. Well, they, they, the gave it a, they gave it to the tackle to to uh, Medlock, but it looked like uh, Potts got him too there. But anyway, it was a two-yard loss. Second down and 12 for the Hurricanes, and Manville is desperately trying to hold up to three here. Yeah, if you're Manville and you can stop them and just, just take a field goal here, only down six and another drive for you, that would be huge. Here's Penson under center, fake hand off to Payne. Left side, got a man open, he had it, and he dropped it. Johnson just couldn't hang on to but it But a good there. hit there by uh, O'Neal. Absolutely. O'Neal got him right when he had the pass. Was it, was it Johnson, you said, that yep. had it? And then uh, O'Neal laid the wood to him and the ball popped out of there and it's third down and 12. This is a big play. Huge play. Almost eight minutes left here. In yeah, the, if Mango the can stay within a, a score, obviously that's huge for them and then the opposite is true for the Hurricanes because they want to put more distance between the two teams. Third and 12. Penson He's got Douglas to his left. He's looking left, going to go to Douglas. It's going to be caught. It's caught at the one-yard line. Is he in? They're going to give it's it to him at the one-yard one. line. Wow. What a Caleb what a Douglas, what a catch. You can't go wrong going to Caleb Douglas. What a catch. 
And just like you've said, Patrick, with that size that Douglas has, he can just go up with that 6'3 frame and just grab that out of the air. And that's exactly what happened is, is now you have Hightower on the one, first and goal. Well, Penson also puts it there for him to be able to make the catch, which oh, that's yeah. huge. No, perfect, perfect pass. Yeah, I don't want to discredit Penson anyway. He had a perfect pass there to where only Johnson could get it. Yep. And if he just would have fell backwards and not had a defender there, it would have been a touchdown. But unfortunately for him, well, Manville got to him before he got to there. That's the second or third time Douglas has had the the high pass to him, and he was able to out-jump the defender. And now they're going to call timeout. Yeah, because I think Hightower wanted to argue that it should have been a touchdown on that one as, as the head coach was over there by the by the referee in the white hat timeout. arguing with Hightower. him. So it will be timeout. first and goal from the one for for Hightower. This Vipe live presentation of Fort Bend Hightower Playoff Football is brought to you by Xfinity, the future of awesome. By First Tire and Automotive with four great locations in Fort Bend County. For the best prices on tires and everything else your vehicle needs to run on at its very best, visit firsttireandauto.com. Also by Archer Volkswagen on the Southwest Freeway, just inside the Sam Houston Tollway. They've been open since 1956, and they're ready to serve you. You'll feel like family when you're at Archer Volkswagen. Also by the Needville, Needville Insurance Agency. You'll get the very best rate on your car and home insurance when you put Needville Insurance Agency to work for you. Bradley Stavanaugh and his team shop dozens of carriers so you pay the lowest premium possible. Call them at 979-793-7411 or go to needvilleinsurance.com. First and goal, Hurricanes at the one-yard line. Three-point lead, 723 to play in the ball game. It's been a heck of a game. Kind of a back-and-forth deal, and now Hurricanes are trying to put some distance between them and the Hurric uh, then the Mavericks, and now the man jumps offside. Did him, did one of the Hightower Hurricanes move? Let's see here. It is. Oh, my goodness. Man, Miles. that hurts. They, uh, that hurts. Boy, from first and goal from the one to first and goal from the six, you still like the position being first down and all, but, boy, first and goal from the one, you might be able to quarterback sneak it in. And they tried to do a little hurry up there. They all, everybody ran to the line really quickly and unfortunately just weren't in rhythm. Here's the pitch now. Another penalty comes down. Oh, penalty marker. And Penson is pissed, man. Do you, you should see him walking out of that huddle, man. Let's he see. was not happy with ball that start. one. Another yep. false start. Oh, my goodness. It's first and 11. First and goal from the 11 now. Well, now you put yourself in the position of where you were before you got that pass to Douglas, you That's know? That's exactly right. And now... The Mavericks have a little bit of hope again to hold up a three. The only, the good news for the Hurricanes is it's still first down. First and goal from the 11. They had a couple of, I don't know, they, they might have had, what, six, seven uh, false starts tonight. It's, yeah. it's been unbelievable yeah. how many false starts there have been. I can go Penson, back and look in a second. Penson has it. He's got pain. Left side tries to squirt through there, but he can't make it past the eight or nine yard line tackle there by Medlock. Yeah, I got two yards on that one. It's going to be at the nine. He, he was able to, Medlock was able to hang on to his ankles there as it looked like Payne might be able to dart through, but under seven to play. And it's 24-21, the Hurricanes lead. Five total false starts, but they had two delay of games, and, and they had one uh, illegal shift. Those are really uh, tough penalties to swallow, especially if you don't come out on the victory end here. Penson fakes the handoff, rolls to the right, still rolling, looking down to the end zone, and caught for a touchdown! Wow. Oh, what a play by Penson! Wow! That's Jones on the reception. Penson did a great job of rolling to the right. Looked like he might keep running. And he me, stopped, yeah, and he hit, the, he hit his tight end at the goal line for a touchdown. Sorry there, Patrick. I didn't mean it's to cut right. you off there, but I was going to say the Manville defense was like they were all over. It was really close to being deflected there as, as Hightower were coming across toward the middle of the field, and Manville was coming across the outside of the field, and they were about to collide. And fortunately for Penson, he was able to just find – 
the tight end there and shove it right there in that little gap that he had and was able to get that nine-yard reception for a touchdown. Here's Ventura for the extra point. It's up and it's good, and Hightower leads 31-21 with six and a half to play here in the fourth quarter. We're going to take a short break from Hall Stadium. With Internet Essentials from Comcast for only $9.95 a month, you get more. High-speed home internet service included. Peace of mind with XFi Advanced Security included. Access to millions of XFi Wi-Fi hotspots. That's included too. Internet Essentials from Comcast brings you affordable, high-speed internet to your home for only $9.95 a month. When you're connected, you're ready for anything. Visit internetessentials.com for more information. Taxes extra. Restrictions apply. First Star and Automotive heard you were thinking of starting your holiday shopping earlier this year, so the season of giving starts now. $15 off oil changes, $100 off four tires, and save on just about any service. Head to the website firsttireandauto.com and claim your savings. First Star and Automotive, a proud sponsor of Fort Bend Vibe Sports. Make your appointment today at any of the four convenient locations in Sugarland and Cinco Ranch. All four stores open on Saturday. Firsttireandauto.com. Back at Hall Stadium where the Hurricanes have just scored another touchdown to go up by 10. The largest lead of the ball game for either team. And what a time to do it with six and a half to play here in the fourth quarter. And I, I was a little bit surprised over on the other side watching the Manville fans head for the exits. <laughs> call them out then, Patrick. Call I, them out. I'm surprised. There's six and a half to play here. It's... It's not like it's not like there's ten <laughs> seconds left. They got a chance. I mean, I don't know. It's uh, I'm a little surprised by that, but hey, let's see if the Hurricanes can just stamp it home. Here's the kick. It's going to be fielded at the goal line. McLean, 20, and he's going to be wrapped up there at about the 24-yard line and delivered emphatically to the ground <laughs> at the end there. Maybe a little bit too much mustard on that tackle, but. No call there. Yeah, to give you a little bit of drive somewhere on that last drive, Patrick, because because in my opinion, if Hightower comes out with the win, that that's going to be the drive of the game. Uh, Penson found uh, Johnson earlier with that 47-yard pass that he had. Then Payne ran for 15 yards and a couple of penalties later. And uh, fortunately for, for Penson, he was able to find his tight end, number 81, down there with a nine-yard touchdown in the end zone. Yeah, his first catch of the game, uh, Elijah Jones. And what a time for the catch. The 6'2 junior makes the big catch for a little bit of uh, cushion for the Hurricanes. 624 to play, 24-yard line for the Mavericks. They need something quickly if they want to... Make something happen. Here's a quick pass to the left. Caught. Drop. Fought. Uh, he dropped it. Then he picked it up and kept running. <laughs> Just it's like a like Australian rules football out there. And he was able to keep going. It was Isaiah King. <laughs> Jeez. I have seen everything in this game. He he ran with the ball for about four steps, dropped it, and it came right back up to him like he was dribbling the basketball. And here's a handoff to Smith who, uh, Harris, I'm sorry, Ty Harris, he picks up one yard. I don't mean to laugh about that play, but gee whiz, I've yeah. seen it all tonight. Yeah, no, it was 31-yard quote-unquote reception, but yeah, he <laughs> dropped it halfway in and picked it right back up yeah. like he had just dropped his yeah. phone or something. But bounced right back to him. A two-yard gain for Harris. Smith looking, looking. Now he's rolling out to his right. Might have been a hold on the play they did not call, and then uh, Smith threw it out of there and just got rid of it. He got knocked down ap after he threw it as well. I think some of the Hightower people were looking for a hold on the right side. Didn't get it. Second, third down now in eight for the Mavericks. This is obviously four down territory. They trail by 10. About five minutes and 30 seconds left on the clock out here at Hall Stadium. Somehow I just feel like the Mavericks... All right, well, they're not going to give up, that's for sure. The fans did, some of them. <laughs> <laughs> Here's Smith, back to pass, quick pass to the right. He found his man, and he caught it, but the momentum took him out of bounds. And it looked like he could have gotten the first down had he just planted his foot. But the momentum took him out of bounds, and it will be a fourth down and three situation for the Mavericks. That receiver there was Thompson. Yeah, only a five-yard catch there by Thompson. I don't know if he realized exactly where he was because he just kind of nonchalantly went out of bounds. He's a sophomore. He'll, he'll figure it out. He'll figure it out. 
Fourth and three, huge play from the 39-yard line. Smith looking, now he's being rushed, and he's gonna be sacked. Oh my goodness, what a play. Now is that number 55? Sure is. Dalen Ellis, what a play. He Possibly just, just put the nail in the coffin just, right there. It looked like he just grabbed him with one hand and just flung him to the ground. And that's kind of what happened. He big, boy, what a play by Ellis, the 305 pound sophomore. Can you believe that? A sophomore at yeah. 305. Man. <laughs> oh my they, goodness. They make them differently out here in Texas, Patrick. Let me five tell 11, you. 511. Meat 11. and potatoes, baby. Meat and potatoes. Yeah, that's right. That's and, and by the way, it's the day after Thanksgiving, so. Oh, yeah. <laughs> but uh, 511, 305 for Big Ellis. Big play. And that just might do it. Five minutes to play here in the game. Hand it off to your big boy Payne back there. Here's, Let him go to work. He's got it. And he's going to pick up maybe two, but he's still fighting. Yep. He might have got three yards on that play. Good gotta job. love that fight from Payne right there. Yeah, I think they're going to give him two, but uh, looks like he might have reached for three. But it'll be second down and two. Or excuse me, second down and eight after the two-yard gain. Yeah, that's all right. He slipped up on that a couple times so far today, Patrick. <laughs> But who's counting? <laughs> Not me, apparently. 31-21 is the score. The Hightower Hurricanes just have to finish here in the last five minutes to stamp this one home. And more of the Manville fans are heading for the exits after that last gasp on fourth and three and it turned into a sack. Hightower using all the time he leaves it way down to the zero mark on the play clock. Hand off to Payne. No gain on the play. They use all of the 40 seconds that time. Good job by Penson to get the clock down to zero. You got to, Patrick. You got to. I mean, you're not trying to do anything fancy here. You want to protect the ball. That's right. Take as much time off the clock as you can. And give Manville the ball back down to, you know, two scores. Yep. Two scores with about, you know, maybe three minutes left. And, and at that point, there's really not much you can you can do if you're Manville unless you just hope for a miracle. Yep. You're running there. You're trying to get the clock running, obviously. Uh, clock is your enemy as well. And then uh, hopefully, if they don't get the first down, they'll pin him. Pin him as deep as possible. Yeah, these punters today have been great. Here's Penson with Douglas coming across in motion. Hand off to Payne. He's got room, but it closed. He might have got the first down, though. He was close. It was close. He's, he's just going to be one yard short. Yeah, half a yard at least. But Payne bursts through the hole. And it might, be in a, it might be a spot where the Hurricanes could go for it, though. It's fourth down and about a half a yard. Why not? They're asking the coach, but let's see what the coach is going to let them say. Go for it and get it. It's over. If they don't get it. He's letting them stay out there. He's giving it to them. He said, let's hear some from the crowd and let's give it. Look at them. Look your head coach getting everybody. They, they oh, been, no, no, no. They're telling them to calm down. They're at telling least, them to calm at down. least they're going to go for the uh, trying yeah. to get them offside. But they're at the line, ready to go for it. They hand it off to Payne, and he's tackled. Woo! Oh, it might come back to haunt him. Who's that? Oh, my goodness. 60, 50. That is uh, Potts. 50. Xavier Potts. He came wow. shooting through the hole. He was almost like the ball carrier that time. He came yeah. through that hole, and there was nothing that Payne could do. And now the Mavericks have the ball Man, he in got, good field position. He got shot back eight yards on that <laughs> one. Wow. Well, Payne was, uh, or excuse me, Potts was ready for that play. And he sh shot the gap, and as soon as the ball was handed off, he was down. So the Mavericks have a little bit of life here at the 47-yard line of the Hurricanes. Three minutes left. And here's the snap. Smith, plenty of time. Looking to the right, going deep, and it's going to be out of bounds. Out of bounds. Looked like it almost intercepted. The Man, defender the was kind of pushing the receiver a little bit. I thought maybe there would be a little flag on the play, but they let it go. And then the high tower hurricane the defenders were the closest to the reception there, but they were out of bounds. Second down and 10, 2.50 to play. Mavericks. Obviously, they have to score at least a field goal here to make, to make it a one-score game. Here's the quick pass, caught, and dropped right away at the 40. The pass was caught by Thompson. He's short of the first down by about three yards. But it's a 
pickup of a, about seven for the Mavericks. Those who are left for the Manville Maverick crowd are hoping for something big here. To be fair, their student section still looks pretty alive. <laughs> Here's the pass from Smith. It's going to be incomplete. Good play over there by the high tower defender. It looks like number eight, Ferret. Or is it Julian Payne? Could be Julian Payne. Speaking of the high tower defense, guess who's held uh, Manville to only that one touchdown after that muffed fumble to start out this third that quarter. Is amazing. That's it. That's yeah, the that only touchdown or any score they've allowed to Manville. That is a good point. Here's Smith rolling now. Downfield, he's got a man open. He can't yeah. hang on. <laughs> he had the ball at about the 15-yard line. He had his hands on it, and it looked like he was going to be able to catch it, but then it came out of his hands. He had to do a little tightrope act down the sideline to try to tip his toe in there. So he had a little couple things to concentrate on, and he couldn't make the catch. So I believe that might do it. 40-yard line for the Hurricanes. Give them credit for holding them again after a good field position Absolutely. for the Mavericks. Yeah, let me look at this drive. I mean, after that muffed, you know, fumble to start the third, and then they had an 18-yard run from Harris to get their first touchdown uh, yep. for the Mavericks this third. Uh, they were three and out, and then they had a uh, one little 10-yard run, then three and out, three and out. Uh, they got it going, but then that sack uh, crushed them there at the end of that last drive, and then there's the turnover on downs there. So that's that's three or four um, three and outs for the Mavericks, and they just they haven't been able to move the ball down the field very well in the second half. Definitely not like they were moving it in the first half. Right, and that's here's sure. the first play is a one yard gain for Payne, and they let the Mavericks are letting the clock run. I'm a little surprised by that. Um, they got three timeouts. And now who's called the timeout here? Let's see. Uh, maybe official, an injury. Official yeah. timeout injury there. Timeout. One of the players for the Hurricanes is shaken up. One of the linemen coming over to the sidelines. Now he's on a knee. Um, let's see. What else can I say here? Don't miss the UIL Football State Championship starting Wednesday, December 15th at AT&T Stadium in Arlington. Ticket information and more can be found at UILTexas.org. And uh, so there's a player down in the official timeout. 31-21, high tower on top with 145 to play. It's looking pretty good for the Hurricanes here to move on, and they will play Paytow. Yeah, winner of this game plays Paytow. They beat Cedar Park today, 65 to 14 this afternoon, and it, if unless something absolutely you know, miraculous happens. Looks like it's going to be high tower and pay tower next week. Yes, sir. And uh, it'll be quite a game. Uh, again, division rivals, district rivals. And uh, be interesting to see where that game will be played. And someone just threw a water bottle from the uh, <laughs> stands Jeez. that just flew right into the high well. towers line. And. I tell you what, if that's got <laughs> water in it. Oh, it had. There it, were water. That as soon as it hit the ground, you could see all the water coming out from it. Uh, that, that, that could hurt somebody. Oh, I mean, definitely. Hit, hit you in the head, that's not a good thing. Not too smart. Here's the handoff to Payne, who's hit immediately at the 40-yard line. Is Manville going to call timeout or not? Here? I am surprised that you wouldn't call their timeouts here. I mean, as long as there's time on the clock, there's, there's a chance. And tell they're not they, calling a timeout. Tell me this, Patrick. You think there's any way they're tired? I mean, <laughs> we're three and a half hours into this well, game now. Well, that's <laughs> true, but, I mean, this is this is the playoffs. Why wouldn't you, you know, uh, I, I mean, you. You, you know, anything can happen. You score and get an onside kick. And I hear your point, but they obviously uh, – they aren't trying to trying to fight it, you know. Mm -hmm. Down it's two possessions with only a minute they're left. They're just letting them run the clock out here, and now yeah. the players are starting to talk as if they're ready to start shaking hands. And there's 45 seconds to play in the ball game. Yep. High Tower's gonna have to now call another High timeout. High Tower calls here. timeout. Anyway, it looks uh, looks like Manville has uh, thrown the towel in, so so to speak. Mm -hmm. They could have uh, called timeouts there with, uh, I don't know, what was there, about a minute, a couple minutes left in the game. They could have used their timeouts. Coach and staff packing up next to us in the booth. and Yeah, yeah the Manville they, coaching staff. They've had enough. They got the headsets off and 
<laughs> yeah, I think you're right about uh, apparently they've all packed it in. Congratulations right now to the Hurricanes. Do you think Patrick? We're going to move on. Patrick, do you think they, they packed it in when half their fans left the stadium and <laughs> you called them out on it? And they said, you know what? Patrick up there is right. <laughs> These fans don't want to watch us anymore. And, oh, my uh, goodness. And that w w we're just going to call it. It was six point. and a half minutes to play at the time. And yeah. Uh, <laughs> I just was a little surprised by that because, you know, anything can happen in this, the playoffs. My goodness. And here's the Hurricanes for another snap. Payne has it. He's not going to get anything. He's going to lose yardage. Are they going to call a timeout now? They're, they do. They, they call a timeout with 40 seconds left. How about it? I don't know. Maybe that's maybe their strategy was to throw us throw us all off. I well, but the thing is, is there's no time on the clock. There's not enough time. Well, there's still time, but not not enough, enough. for two 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 touchdowns or yeah. two scores. Because you're going to have to go a long way to get that first score. And anyway, Xfinity is a proud. Sponsor of Fort Bend County and Houston area sports on fightfortbend.com with the in Xfinity Sports Zone app. Watch multiple games at once and track live stats and scores while watching another game. It's the best sports entertainment experience with Xfinity X1. 40 seconds to play, and the Hurricanes are poised here to go on to the next round and continue the march here in the playoffs this year trying to keep the magical season alive next week because it looks like this one's going to be a positive result here unless there's a miracle here at the end of this ball game Douglas is going to punt now for the Hurricanes From his own 28-yard line, he kicks it. It's going to go out of bounds. As McLean, or excuse me, uh, Colin Wright was a deep man, and he had no chance to field that. There's 35 seconds to play. And the Mavericks will have one more chance to put some points on the board. And as Kyle has said, the Hurricane defense this second half has really been outstanding. They gave up. The 18-yard run for a touchdown after the muffed kickoff uh, reception there, and since then they've shut the Mavericks out. Yeah, there was very one, impressive. There was one play where Smith got it to um, to King for that 31 yards, um, and then but later on in that drive, that was when uh, big old number 55, Dalen Ellis, got that sack. So here's a pass incomplete as uh, Smith was being harassed. Nobody opened downfield, and then he went short to uh, Harris, but he could not catch it. Second down and 10, and the clock says 29 seconds remaining. And looks like the Hightower Hurricanes are going to beat Manville twice this year. Here's the quick pass, complete, and then ridden down right away. The pass was complete to King. And now he's kind of shaken up. He's kind of bouncing on one foot, coming off the field now. Manville uses a timeout because the clock was going to keep running after the big hit. Pickup of seven yards. It'll be third and three for Manville with only 24 seconds to play. And the Hurricanes are doing a little dancing here. On the field and off. It is their home stadium. I don't care what anybody says about neutral site. You let the Hightower Hurricanes play right at home over here. <laughs> There's no doubt about that. It's I don't know how or or who says it's neutral, but uh, it's the well, it's the uh, ISD's stadium over here. So it's technically not Hightower Stadium. You know, it's Hall Stadium. But <laughs> I mean, I call it Hightower Stadium because their their high school is 500 feet away from me. So yeah, they're just uh, right over here. You can see the school from where we're at here, yep. basically. And yep. uh, High Tower plays their home games here. Manville with 24 seconds left from their own 45-yard line. They trail by 10, and uh, there's a third and three. Smith got time, still looking downfield. Now he's going to run. And he's going to slide in there for a first down, but there's only 15 seconds left in the game now. 
as this game is almost over. It's been a long, long game. That first quarter, first quarter took an hour. And uh, part of the problem was one of our players went off the field, Jeremy uh, Strotter. Hopefully he's okay. We have not heard any word on him. And then there were multiple penalties and then a couple of other injuries. Yeah, Robert Staten Jr., the defensive end, sophomore for the Hurricanes, had an injury earlier, so hoping him the best, as well as who you just said, Jeremy Strada, who had that really scary injury to start the game, almost a 15 to 20 minute delay yeah. to get the card out and everybody out right. here. So, so he was uh, wishing the uh, best for him. Yeah, hopefully he'll be all right. The prayers yeah. go out for sure. So it'll be first and 10 for the Mavericks. 18 seconds left. Smith back to pass, looking downfield, has a man open. It's Harris to the 30-yard line with a good catch. But it's going to be a little bit too little and too late for the Mavericks as they hustle up to the line and the clock continues to run. Hurricanes are fine. There's no way the Hurricanes can lose this game now with five seconds to play. Mavericks will run one more play. Great season for the Mavericks. They end up with a 10 and 3 record. Yep. But uh, to their credit, they had a they had a really tough tough game here, and they they stayed with it literally all the way through three and a half quarters. Yep. A break here or there, either way, could have swung the game in a different direction. Smith running around now, trying to make a final pass. Now he's just going to run out of bounds, and the game is over. The Hurricanes of High Tower have beaten the Manville Mavericks 31 to 21. Great second half for the Hurricanes. They move on to play Paytow. And that'll be a great game, and I'm sure Roger Smith will have all the details of that game coming up next week. We'll find out where the game's gonna be played and which day, and I'm sure Bite FortBend.com will be there to bring it to you. Kyle, what else you got to say about this game to wrap it up here? Man, Patrick, it was a lot of penalties in that first half, a lot of injuries, a lot of just out of rhythm plays that I've never seen, you know, watching high school and even just watching professional sports my whole life. But, but this second half was a lot more... Um, normal I could say you know <laughs> yeah. and uh, unfortunately for Hightower I mean you got to give them credit they came out here fumbled the kickoff and Manville came and ran an eight, a 18 yard run with Harris and a touchdown to start out this third quarter to go up seven and rather than give up and say that oh you know why do we do that they really stuck to their guns came back out here and had some great great drives to finish off this second half along with that uh, 92 yard run um, from Payne early, you can't say enough about that guy. But man, what a game all around for this high tower team. I don't even know if I can pin it on one person. It's got to be either Payne or Penson if I can put it on one yeah, person well, because they just they were tremendous. After they uh, after they fumbled that opening kickoff of the second half and gave up the points, it did not look good. It was looking yeah. like okay, momentum momentum is surely on the Manville side. But then give credit to the Hurricanes. They marched it back down and tied it. And more, and, and more specifically, give credit to that defense that then, they were able to come was, with all those stops, was, man. I was just going to say, you know, Payne, Penson, Douglas, great on offense. Give the offensive line credit for some huge holes on Payne's long runs. But like you said, maybe ultimately was that defense who really slammed the door in the second half after the uh, shaky start Absolutely. of the third quarter. Well, that's it from Hall Stadium. Good news for the Hurricanes. High Towers moving on. And stay tuned for when that game's going to happen later next week. And uh, like as I said, we'll I'm sure be having it. Uh, Roger Smith will get that all set up. He's the guy who puts everything together for us here at VitefortBend.com. Uh, we're going to sign off here. This is Patrick Kinnick along with Kyle Harris. Thank you, Kyle, for all your great work again on with the board and uh, all the controls. Had fun, and Patrick. Had it, fun. It's been great. So from Hall Stadium... Great news again for Hightower. They win 31 to 21 over Manville, and they live to see another day in the playoffs. Have a great weekend. God bless everybody. Thank you. See you next week, folks. You work hard, so you deserve the good things in life. 
like getting an amazing deal on awesome internet. That's why there's never been a better time to switch to Xfinity. Get the fast and reliable internet you deserve for $19.99 a month for 12 months with a one-year contract. And ask how to score 12 times the speed for the same internet price when you add Xfinity Mobile. Just imagine, faster downloads, more streaming, the possibilities are endless. Plus, you'll save hundreds over AT&T. Or learn how to get a $200 prepaid card when you get gig speed internet during the Xfinity Black Friday sales event. That means powering a house full of devices when everyone's home this holiday season. So what are you waiting for? Sign up now because you deserve awesome internet. Go to Xfinity.com, call 1-800-XFINITY, or visit a store today. Requires paperless billing and auto pay and 12 6 Restrictions apply. New connect internet, 50 megabits per second customers only. Equipment, taxes, and fees extra and subject to change. After term, regular rates apply. Compares monthly service charge for Xfinity 600 megabits per second to AT&T 500 megabits per second, each with one unlimited mobile line for a year as of 10 6 Reduce speeds up to 20 gigabytes of mobile usage.